Uh, hello there, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Chit Chat Corner with Cat. Good morning, everyone. Good evening. Hello, Crazy Witch. Hello, Hello. Wathis. Hello, Barb. Hello, <laughs> Keeper. True crime and paranormal. Speaking of true crime and paranormal, I, you know, that last show I did on uh, true crimes, I, you know, on, on some of the cases I had to study to, to pick out a case, a lot of the cases I was reviewing, I found the people to be alive. Correct. That's why I've been in like a privacy ethical mode all week. And and yeah. also it made me have to choose because in that last case, I had privacy issues and I had ethical issues. So I had to choose which one should I respect the most. Um, and in that case, I went privacy 100%. Um, but my mind, I was, I had to be so careful because of the interaction between the privacy and the ethical. So in the end, I thought ethical has to have priority because more people can be saved. But I had to respect that privacy one a hundred percent, you know, because you've got to Here, protect here's my safety. deal. And I gave a lecture. So I said, if you're tired of your life and you just wanted to just say, I'm done with you, I'm done with my job, tell people I'm sick and tired. I want to just walk away. Don't just vanish and act like you're dead and just vanish off the face of the earth because your loved ones are worried about you. You know, then two or three years go by, your your family gets, you know, presumably a death certificate. They get, you know, life insurance. Then lo and behold, you get a DUI. You, you, you get stopped by the police. You know, you get arrested and you're like, well, you're not John Doe. You're Marcus Smith. And yeah. you're like, well, my gig's up now. And you're like, well, now you got, you know, gov false government ID. No, that's a crime. Uh, you know, now now you got charges on you. Now you got fraud for, you know, insurance. And that, now, now you got, you know, possibly serving jail time and prison yeah. time. So it's like, you know, now my thing is, if you got skeletons in the closet and you say like you're a gambler or you owe somebody like lots of money yeah. and you're trying to skip town, you know, maybe that's a different story, but take your family with you. But what if your family are the ones that are looking for you and they're baddies? Yeah, but just tell somebody. You would hope so. It depends on how bad the whole lot of them are around you, though. But like, you got law enforcement and all these agencies. You got search and rescues. You got people, you know, in rivers, dredging rivers, yep. dredging yep. ponds. You know, you got scuba divers. You got search and rescues out in forest and in woods looking for bodies, trying to recover a body, looking for evidence. You, you got yep. man hours. You got time tax dollars at waste yeah. and you know i mean i mean you know umpteen hours of people you know trying to find you yeah. and do investigations and i spent hours on on some of these cases and next thing you know I, I'm, I'm seeing body cam footage and they're, and they're like uh uh you've been missing for three years and uh what are you doing and the guy's yeah. like well my gig's up and they're like uh what are you doing? And, well, I just got tired of my life and I just wanted to start over. I agree because it puts all of those services in danger. Every single person that goes out there looking, you know, diving, they're all put in unnecessary danger and wasting, you know, of time where they could be getting someone else out of a difficult situation. I totally agree. Or finding somebody else that is actually is missing or that yeah exactly help. yeah exactly i agree 
but I don't know. Like, so I wasted seven. a lot of hours this past week because I mean I, I think I found like seven or seven to nine cases that I looked at, and each time I thought we had a potential case that people sent me or I looked at and researched, I, I ended up finding them arrested in jail or yeah. body footage of them or or in in in, in the local newspaper. Oh, this person's been, you know, found in another state, living and married with three other kids and another yeah. family, and living another life under another alias. It's like, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's, yeah, absolutely, yeah. keeper, true crime, paranormal. It is true waste of time. It is, and it puts them all in danger, unnecessary danger. So you know, I mean, you, you saw what you read. You know, yeah. I mean. Uh, if you got skeletons in your closet and you do rip off somebody, and I can't say it because of one of the platforms we're on, but you know when I'm getting that, right? So if you do rip off that dealer, what not? Yeah. Or you do not pay off that jockey that you owe money to, that is your fault. Exactly. You're going to pay the piper sooner or later. Yeah, we say you do mean, the crime, do the time. So yeah, yeah I mean, doesn't matter who you, you are. You can only shave the hair and grow a beard, and or, or shave the beard and grow the hair, or wear a wig and dye your hair, or different whatever you can do, gain weight, lose weight, whatever. So many different ways, but I mean, it 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 you're going to pay the piper sooner or later. Exactly. Hopefully, so, you know, like the same like this week, you know, with the AI business, that what exactly what you're talking about took me into another area with the AIs and with um, the legal system. Absolutely, um, Norma. Tracking devices, that sort of thing. Um, this lady recently had a crack. She's having a, a new legal action against another AI company. She wanted to change her face, you know, and a profile on the phone or whatever. And she's an Asian lady, you know, and when she got the, the new profile, exactly um she turned into a white person with no asian features and you know you... then there's another situation happening where mummies and daddies are now putting the anklets around their children's ankles as tracking devices the bail anklet if a person is on bail and they have the anklet and it's to do with prison that comes under the Bail Act, whereas the other anklets and watches and everything else like that, hi, Liana, hi, Norma, hi, Ozzy Sue, that, that comes under intellectual property law. So, <laughs> minefield. Well, see, they just passed laws over here. I don't know, uh, in, in, in Indiana, Kentucky, about GPS tracking. Uh, you cannot put trackers, uh, boyfriend, girlfriend, husbands, and wives on your vehicles and, and track them uh, because that's been, uh, I, I forgot, I don't know the statues, ladies and gentlemen, you have to Google it. Yeah, uh, they I know, uh, especially because of stalking laws and so forth. Uh, but uh, now law enforcement, we had to get warrants and so forth to, to put trackers on, on, on vehicles and so forth and and whatnot but uh but anymore the trackers are so small i mean you can slip them underneath the bumper you can in yeah. gas caps uh yeah. on the rims of cars i mean they're, they're that's how small they are gps trackers so uh but you know it's i don't know uh ai i mean they're they're truck drivers right now are throwing a fit in america is because uh, state police are using AI uh, to catch cell phone uh, truck drivers uh, texting and holding phones while they're driving semi trucks. Yep. And, and what they do is they got these, uh, you know, those, uh, those little portable signs they got on the side of the road, uh, caution, merge traffic, you know, those little signs with the flashing lights and pointing yep. arrows. Well, they got these, and they got the, the, the those, those little boxes, but they got the poles. They got the cameras on them, 
and they actually look inside your vehicle and take a picture of your face yep. and inside your cab and see what you're doing while you're driving. Yep. And, and the police are watching you. And when you go by, they're watching you and they take a picture <laughs> and, and they're like, oh, ten four rubber ducky right there. You got uh, that truck right there. It's got a cell phone in his hand. And uh, go ahead and fall him over right there. And they're pulling him over. And like, why are you pulling me over? They're like, we got you right here. And they're and they're showing them on the computer on a, on on a tablet. Uh, you you got a phone in your hand texting. And they're like, what? And they're like, yeah. And they're then they're getting they're getting tickets. So now yes. there's like that that's invasion of privacy. Wait a minute. No, you're not supposed to drive. That's why they have headsets, truck drivers with the big old microphones. Yeah. Oh, Bluetooth. So but yeah, hey, Bluetooth. On the highways now, we've got these great big metal bars that go across certain sections of the highway. And they do you you they calculate how long it takes you to get from point A to point B. If you're driving like, you know, I don't stop and have little picnics or whatever. I just drive. I just want to get home. So I'm going over the average time that it takes, that what they think it takes, you know, to get to a certain destination. They are actually tracking all the whole distance. And then they're saying, oh, it's been two hours that you've been driving. You know, if you've got your GPS on, and there's some sort of connection. I don't trust any of it as an information security analyst at all. Um, you get this message saying, you've been driving for more than two hours. And I'm going, duh, you know, like leave me alone kind of thing. I haven't stopped for picnics. I haven't gone to the toilet, you know, like I'm driving. But now they're calculating all of that. So further up the line, you know, they, they're kind of looking out for speeding, Tired people, too tired. You know they shouldn't be driving. That sort of stuff. There's, there is no information security privacy. I'm sorry, but and technology. It's a mess. No technology. And and I said this a long time ago. Uh, so up in the Indianapolis, in Indianapolis and in Indiana, years ago they were putting strips in the road, and. Uh, what they were doing is that uh, it was reading the vehicle as it was crossing over. It was reading your VIN number. It was reading yeah. how fast you were going. And uh, it was reading something else. I forgot what it was. And uh, it was like, what? And I was like, yeah. So yeah. in, in tow roads up north, uh, I never forget uh, when my dad's mom passed away. Uh, you know, I was still on, on the department uh, from one tow tow road to the tow, one tow booth to the other tow booth. Tow booth. Uh, they told me you better slow down, and I'm like, "What are you talking about?" Yeah, they're like, exactly. They're like, "We know yeah. when you paid from there to here, how fast you was going." And I'm like, yeah. how, "How do you know?" They're like, "Because we know how long it takes you to get from yeah. point here to point here." Because the mileage, right, and the time. Yeah, and I was like, "Damn!" So, <laughs> yeah. You know, so you know, technology and, and everything like that, and it's it, it's just it. You're not going to get away from it. now. Indiana, uh, they did the face recognition program on the driver's license for years, and they can go back. I forgot how many years, and you can see a person age uh, as they got older. And uh, and that way that you could not say, uh, cat, I'm Susie and I'm going to get me a driver's license as Amy. Yeah, because that way, when you submit your documents, I'm like, ah, uh -uh, you're cat. You ain't you ain't Amy or Susie exactly. because they had your face. Right. And that's why a lot of uh, the states had to mandate the new driver's license. Uh, face recognition to for the airports for the airlines because so many people were were making fake documentations to get driver's license and IDs. And now the airports in America, they want to scan your driver's license and scan your face. 
And I'm like, wow. And and what they're going to do. And I said this when, when they started that, it, it's going to be uh, your choice to do it. And then they're going to do it. They're going to start checking for warrants and all that other stuff. And lo and behold, same thing. Same thing at the casinos. Yeah. Yo, child support. They're going to take out the money, your your earnings right then and there. So it, it, it's hey, go ahead. Testify. Welcome to the show. It's interesting you say that about the airplanes. My friend uh, a couple of days ago got a plane. Hey, everyone. Yep. Just whatever comes up. <laughs> um, my friend caught the plane the other day, and like you all get to know, you're getting to know me. I'm pretty blind. Blind. Um, she gets on the plane. I said, "Oh, did you get a window seat?" And she says, "Oh no, there's no seat allocation." And I went, "What?" And she says, "Shut up, Kath. I know exactly what you're thinking." And yep, yeah, when the plane crashes, how they're going to identify any of the bodies? You know, there's. This is the first time I've ever heard of no seat allocations on the plane. The plane going down there, everyone had seat allocations. Everybody knew who was sitting where, you know, on the flight on the flight back. No seat allocation. So I kind of upset her straight away before she got on the plane. <laughs> yeah, I never heard that. I, I thought they always had to have seat allocations. That way it was a manifest which showed who sat where. Exactly. That was my point. You know, as soon as she said, oh, no, no one's got allocated seats, I thought, whoa, this is sus. That's the first time I've heard of that. The same, it was the same company. Um, beats me. So the alien hearings, the whistleblowing. Now, my thought on that, Godhead, is uh, I think that's the government uh, actually telling people to come forward and uh, giving out the information on purpose to disinform. So the good way to to actually to inform people is to give the facts and also to give false information at the same time. Uh, so I believe it's the government instructing people on what to say to give out the correct information and also give out false information as well. So I think it is something to distract you over here and go ahead and give you this information at the same time to confuse you with something else that they don't want you to pay attention with. It's like a magic trick. Um, I, I can't say uh, during the pandemic, I can't say the C word because we're being monitored uh, on one platform. It's weird. Uh, it really is some of the rules. But uh, during the pandemic, uh, they actually acknowledged that uh, UFOs were real. And uh, nobody paid attention. Everybody was like, they're like, yeah, okay. And I was like, the government just announced uh, everybody. And they're like, we already knew that. So, yeah. So, yeah, that, that was pretty interesting. That really upsets me. All of that on on a on the level of Julian Assange being locked up for sharing the truth. Um, then you've got all the different countries linked up to the judicial system, which it doesn't exist. The with the whistle blowing, um, they changed the act over here so that. Um, in I can't I haven't got the act number. They here. they're asking you, do you believe in UFOs and aliens? Me? Yeah. Sure. You know, I can't. Yep. I believe in science, and I know how good science is. So, you know, anything's possible. Anything can be created. If, um, if you're trying to tell me how uh, this God created universe, over 230 million galaxies that we are the only creatures alive. No way. Yeah. The, the mathematically, that's impossible. Mathematically, that is impossible, ladies and gentlemen. And, you know, like, look at the history of, of all the, of everything, all the buildings, the archaeology, you know, everything, the science of energy, um, 
our twit leaders, you know. That, honestly, yeah, I believe it. They're there. And I think bring them on, get rid of these twits that have no idea what they're doing, and let's get going, create a now, better place. I do think a lot of the stuff that we are seeing are some of our own technology that are man-made, yes, yep, me that too. are top secret. Uh, do I think that we have uh, UFOs uh -huh. that are crashed? Yeah, absolutely. I do believe that. Yeah. yeah me too. Uh, do I think we have UFO technology? Absolutely. Uh, do I do I think we have uh, alien bodies that have you that have crashed in the past? Absolutely, I do believe in that. I believe in uh, ancient uh, aliens uh, series. Is that what it's called? Ancient aliens. Yeah. Or was it called? I haven't got the word. Ancient that word. aliens, isn't it? Or ancient civilizations? I think it's ancient aliens. So, yeah, I do believe in that. So, uh, another question. Grizz, do you believe that those come forward or under observations or watch? Do you believe that those who come forward or under... So, here, here's the thing, the whistleblowers, right? So, yeah. when the whistleblowers come forward and, and, they're, and they're talking, right, and they, and, and, and they do this, it's like, wait a minute. Now, if I'm a whistleblower, I'm not going to be on TV going. I'm going to be nervous. So well, I probably yeah. wouldn't be doing it in, in front of the video camera at first. I'd probably be in the shadows changing my voice, you know. Well, look you, what's happening you know, to all our journalists. It, or doing it something like this. I worked for NASA and the <laughs> DIA, you know, something like this. But, you know, so I, I would definitely change it. You know, look at Rob Lazar. You know, now he's finally coming out and, and he's like, I told you so, right? Yeah. And they try to erase him. So like, go ahead, Cap. Our, our journalists and that, so many of them now disappearing, they're being jailed. You know, so now we've got problems going on with different platforms where – the journalists, is, they're going quiet on us because they're frightened too. Like they're actual, that's their employment, you know. We, it's really hard to get the truth and transparency these days, very difficult. Like, and then, and then because it's becoming harder and harder to get like the truth, like a, a lot of us are speaking the truth, which is fantastic, and then there are others that are trying to speak the truth but they're getting annihilated or locked up or threatened or so the balance between, you know, bit feeling safe to be able to speak, you know, this freedom of speech and there ain't human no freedom rights. of speech in America unless you want to flip off a police officer and cuss about. Yeah. So yeah, well, thank like you, Russell. Did. Ancient aliens it is. And and I and I do believe in that. Uh, yeah, I am. I'm sending. You got to tell me because uh, I don't look at private chats that much. You got to tell me to send her the link. So I'm do, doing it right now. Oh, thanks. <laughs> but uh, but no, and 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 I, I do so. And most of the whistleblowers that actually come forward either gets erased from history or from Earth, or they mysteriously die. Yep. So explain that. So. I uh, like as you know I'm I'm an information security analyst. I was doing the exact same thing Julian was doing at the time. You know, we were protecting data, but we also had a duty of care. Um th there's one particular thing that I opened up and um I pretty much had to leave the city as a result. And I pretty much couldn't work in the industry again. But, like, duty of care-wise, there's absolutely no way I could shut my mouth. I had to proceed in order to help a lot of people, a lot of children, you know. Um, it's, you know, you that's the dilemma. You, you're protecting data, um, but... 
it crosses boundaries ethically. Um, you know, it's it's not like you sign a gag confidentiality agreement at the beginning of your that particular job. Um, and then if you find something on the scale that this was and the scale that Julian has just shared the truth, yeah, it's just the truth, to say in order to protect other people and to stop other people getting hurt down the line from these controllers, I call them, um, that are all linked together, it, you, you know, like I went to my boss and I said, what do you think of this? Showed him fact. He says, oh, no, I can't question morality. I said, what? I said, don't you have a four-year-old child? And the guy's backing off on me. You know, he was the big chief of the whole big, big company. This is all high corporate stuff. And um, he said, no, I can't. And I said, why not? He says, oh, no, 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 I can't question morality. I said, well, I sure can. And I, I stood there and I said, I, oh, Catherine, blah, blah, resign effectively, immediately, la, la, la. I left that. It was a really good big job. I left there and then I went and sat at the police station for on and off for 18 months to create the first pedo, um, you know, task force in New South Wales. That, 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 there's a certain, I understand why people speak the truth, you know, to help other people. Right. But, it, you, that, you know, that's not, to be gagged on that sort of situation is, Keep keep trying because, you know, if I find kids in danger, yeah, elders or kids, animals and that, it's going to be pretty hard to shut me up. Yeah. You know? So I got your personal message. I don't know what's going on with the um, uh, the stars, ladies and gentlemen, on Facebook. So I did put the GoFundMe in my cash app out there. Uh, so uh, I don't know. Uh, for some reason, it works. Sometimes it doesn't. But the good thing is uh, YouTube, uh, thanks to you all, uh, if, if you do want to donate, you can also donate to the YouTube channel too. Thank you all for all the uh, followers and, and people uh, listening. Uh, if it wasn't for you all, I wouldn't be able to do that. So uh, there's three options. Thank you all very much. And uh, the Godhead uh, testified to, to your question. Uh, has a friend of mine, uh, uh, I have a friend of mine had a situation and I'm not comfortable speaking about, which I understand, uh, especially on, on this kind of, uh, on one of the platforms I can't mention because we're on 15, 15 or 17 right now, not counting all the Facebook groups. Uh, have you ever heard about the black cars coming to those who have had them? Yes. Um, okay. They actually have uh, what we call, well, what we suspect uh, have uh, electronic uh, EMF uh, pulse guns or whatnot where they can zap electronic devices uh, to fry them. Uh, they do threaten you. The O terms for men in black. Um, we, we actually are seeing uh, and hearing People out in the field uh, on investigations uh, uh, like Bigfoot and Dogman, like cryptid investigations and having drones flying over and seeing black SUVs. Uh, so, yeah, so that is happening. Yeah. Uh, so that is nothing out of the new. So, yes. Hey, Roger, welcome to the show. Uh, no, just didn't. curious, don't want to dig in, dig on it, though. Yeah, no, it is actually happening. Uh, yeah, uh, there is, um, there was a couple of people that videoed a giant on a mountain. Russell can help me on this one, uh, Easterbrooks, uh, that filmed uh, a giant, uh, allegedly a giant on a mountain while driving, and yes. uh, he ended up recanting his story. And uh, on TikTok or on one of the platforms, and he ended up disappearing. And his family is like crying uh, on social media, like don't know where he went to. 
like just disappeared. And the video he 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 recanted his story uh, looked like he had no choice and he was coerced in yeah. in making the video. So and it was like, no, it was all staged and and. and his body language, his, his tone of voice, and his micro expressions did not seem bright and legit. Yeah, so, I saw that. Yeah, so there was a lot of questions about a lot of things, especially when it deals with the paranormal and cryptid. So you're right on there. Uh, yeah. Rebecca, the screen is blurred, and the rest of my chat messages were, I don't think I had too much to drink. <laughs> well, I don't think I'm drinking a sweet tea from Northern Kentucky. Uh, but no, the, for some reason, I don't know. I reached out to Facebook about the stars. I I don't know. So, so that's why I just throw the two out there and use the uh, uh, the uh, YouTube one that, that came out. Uh, Russell, ever wonder why aliens eat? Do they bring seeds to Earth? You know, that is a good question, Russell. I don't know what they eat. Um, I don't know. Maybe Maybe they don't have like digestive systems like we do. They just feed on energy. Well, now they have to because they they have to be flesh and blood uh, because they do die because we do re recover the bodies allegedly, right? Uh, we do have autopsies allegedly on them uh, per the government. Uh, so that's what the so I don't know that that is a good question. I saw on one of your other shows for the first time someone had found some poo and they had it in their freezer. Oh, Bigfoot. Oh, my gosh. Don't get <laughs> me going on that. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, God here. I want to hear that all the time. Intimidation. But intimidation does happen. Definitely. Uh, Russell can uh, contest to that, too, probably with some of his stories that he's probably interviewed people. Uh, we have people on my show uh, that has actually uh, had counters where uh, alleged Bigfoot has been uh, shot and killed and Indian tribes and uh, government officials and uh, fish and wildlife and other uh, government three-letter agencies with uniforms without patches showed up and uh we're involved and uh we're not very nice and uh treated them pretty rough so it's scary uh, like i had this bloke arrive one day this is going back some years back uh -huh. yeah because i've been out of the field for a while because of other things anyway um i get this big knock on the door i've got this like a glass door and you can see like a figure you can't see who it is and this guy, he's like six foot five. I he, I opened the door, you know, said, oh, hello, you know. I said, who are you, you know? Wait a minute, Cat. Keeper, do you, you talking about the guy that filmed the giant? He died? Are no. you serious? The one that, that, that filmed the giant, you read his obituary? See what I'm talking about? See, that's Kat? a second. That's a second reporter I've heard that's disappeared in the last four weeks. That was on line showing us footage, and he's gone as well. Wow, that's sad. Yeah, I'm that's here. very interesting. See, even Russell said yes to set up. Yeah, I did yeah. not. I did not know he died. I know. I know he went missing. You see the fear when he was like you said the body language when he was speaking. He was petrified in my world. Yes, you know, he was looking at his body language, and he was and he was looking at it, people in the room. He, he it was he, horrifying. Yeah, he he didn't know. I mean, he was. He was not, he was, he didn't know who to look at. He was, yeah. he and was very color. uncomfortable. He was gray. You know, when people, you see them and the, the fear, that, that raw fear, um, he had that, you know, where they go yeah. gray in the face. Yeah. Oh, that's sad. Yeah, it's, that's, it, uh. 
Well, that's like the guy. Uh, who was it? Russell Easterbrooks, uh, Barbara Hartman, Keeper True Crimes, Norma, Rebecca. Who was the guy that made the, the, the car out of water? And uh, he met with some executives at a restaurant and he ran out and he said, they killed me. They, they poisoned me. They poisoned me. They killed me. And he dropped dead on the sidewalk and his car disappeared. All of his research disappeared out of his garage and, uh, and all that. Who was that? Uh, I can't remember because I don't have my other computer or my iPad up and running right now where I can do the fact check. Uh, so, yeah, so uh, that was that was going to take down the oil companies because they do have stuff that runs on hydrogen. They do have stuff that runs on water. Uh, I mean, heck, they have they had steam engines uh, on trains and small motors back in the days that, that ran on water. The same so, with the Hemp fuel, that, that guy got wiped out as well. Yeah, I mean that. I mean that's a multi. I don't know. I don't know what it comes after a trillion. See, Norma, yeah. you remember that? Yes, because remember he ran out, and uh, he's like, "Yes, he's like they killed me, they poisoned me, they." Because he knew, he knew he was dying. Yeah. So yes, yes, that is correct, keeper. Stanley Meyer, that's right, Rebecca. Stanley Meyer, thank you. Yeah, and everything disappeared. The, his car, his all of his research, his notes, everything. So, yes. They've been trying to shut, you know, scientists up for years that can create, you know, positive change. Only the powers to be the controllers are not interested because it doesn't fill their pockets immediately well that's like the united states um harris Thanks, yes thank you it's like harris made the uh yeah well, uh, comment that you know well, we need by uh, 2030 uh, everybody needs to have electronic or electric vehicles and that way we can reduce the population so we can have cleaner uh, air so our children can uh, breathe better. And everybody didn't catch it. She said reduce population. Population control. And, and nobody, everybody just sat back like hunky-dory, like hunky-dorky-dorky-dory. And, and everybody replayed that speech. And That's then like they showed the kids... You know, 40,000 kids in a cobalt mine, you know, digging, you know, for the cobalt, for the, the you know, for the, for the battery, one of the minerals. And, and the car batteries are, are horrible for the environment. So. It's like with the, the word we're not allowed to say, that's three C words I've got now that I, I can't say. Um, or four actually, but this this C word, you know, with everybody that got crook, you know, over the last few years since 2019, um, in the aged care areas, that to me, it was just legalized euthanasia. And then you know you've got all the poor people now that are homeless, got no food, and all of that. I I consider that along the same line. It, it's not good. So uh, what she's referring to is when we had that uh, that epidemic. Yes, thank with you. With the C word, right? <laughs> yes, and, uh, one And one of our uh, psychic shows on Mondays, uh, one of the psychics, Angela Ford, uh, was talking about when everybody was cooped up in a home, uh, a lot of people were meditating and everything else. And she said the C word twice. And uh, one of the flagships of our channels that we uh, uh, broadcast on flagged the program. And I was like, dude, what? And it was like, you were misleading the public and disinforming about, 
uh, the C word and all this other stuff. And uh, I was like, oh, I'm like, yeah, I am like reviewing that. I, I'm, I'm like, yeah, I am. I'm going to I'm going to fight this. Right. I'm, 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 I'm appealing this. I'm like, we're not even talking about medical. And uh, and man, do not appeal that. They took it down. They're like, screw you. We'll show you what happens when you appeal. But they just took the whole video down. I was like, wow. But so, yeah, it is ridiculous. So uh, I had to go back and reread the rules. And I had to share the rules with people about certain things we can and cannot say. And it's like, whoa. But Grizzy. But anyways. On yeah. our show last weekend, I was t speaking. Yeah, thank you. It is cold. It's very cold. I can't feel my hands. Um, on our show last week, I, we, as you know, I was raving on, and I said instead of swearing, I said beep quite a few times. You know, they translated that on the the commentary down the bottom here. The you know your wording that I had said. A very, very, very bad word. So they have switched it back. I never said that word. No way. Hey, Michelle. Yeah, yeah. It, it's I, I, I do not get it. So, so I got thirteen thousand on TikTok for the shadow hammer came for me. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, they they do get crazy on the rules if, if if they don't like what you say, and especially on certain topics. Godhead. That's for sure. So what are you doing, Michelle? Hello, <laughs> team I'm for uh, from Florida. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> talking about aliens, talking about uh, all kinds of stuff. Hi, Norma. Um, aliens, yes, interesting topic. We actually have a alien nest type not far from here. They call it Pyramid Hill. So it's actually a natural looks like a natural hill but it's in the shape of a pyramid but it's actually like a hill there's a town built right on it so there's a lot of alien activity there ufo stuff oh wow Did, they seem to be close to um the portals um is that possibly that that's probably how they there? sometimes they they yeah well if other realms are coming in through portals why aren't why not aliens? Yeah, going back with, with history and that with the like 1969 and that down in Sonora. And uh, one of the ladies on the show, it's about 10 degrees, I guess. Yeah, um, you say 10 degrees, we're thinking 10 degrees Fahrenheit. How, how what's that? What's that like no. 30 <laughs> something degrees Fahrenheit? I, I don't know. I, I can't. No, do that. That. Yeah, I don't it's know what the conversion <laughs> is. I have to convert it. Convert 10 degrees. Yeah, a Japanese lady 40. was saying this morning um, that whenever there are, like, um, earthquakes and that, there's a lot of upstairs activity that goes along with it at the same time. 50 degrees Fahrenheit. 50, thanks. It's cold. Ten degrees is fifty, and and that's cold. I v I v m i and never mind. I can't say that on the air. We're doing one better than you. We're eleven degrees here to, right at the moment. It's cold, cold it's bad. Um, it's warm yeah, outside, outside here. here. Yeah. Um, someone said hello to me there. I just hang on. I'll put my glasses on. <laughs> God had testify. Hello. Um. Yeah, aliens, huge topic. UFOs, big topic. Um, okay. They're definitely out there. We're here. Why aren't they there? Yeah, exactly. Like the universes, you know, yeah, absolutely. I noticed right. something in a, a couple of the yeah. shows recently. I noticed. They're not uh, all nice either. No, that's right. <laughs> Seen quite a few reptilian ones. They're not very nice. They're scary. <laughs> I, can I, I saw this bloke's face transform the other day and I could see he appeared to me to be dual citizen. <laughs> Absolute dual citizen. 
They are amongst us. They definitely are amongst us. I know. I remember um, airports. Going through airports is a gr um, great place to see um, people that are dual citizens. Um, <laughs> I, have a, I have a friend, and he's forever going. Does it okay, look that alien? No, look, and I go. Yep, you could be right. Um, <laughs> there's definitely like features of um, that uh, you, you can look for, but he's really good at picking them out. But they so. seem to know that you can pick them out as well because they hone straight in onto you. Like, oh, okay, you know, I know, you know, I know, you know, like. Well, they, they might read. They have telepathy, so why wouldn't they? <laughs> like I got stared down severely. It was like, okay, I recognise you, recognise me, and I thought, whoa, this is interesting. It's only happened to me twice. Um, but, like, I haven't been in this scene or my life. It's only recently that I've been involved in the paranormal and that. Yeah, well, last night I had um, in my left ear I was getting the it felt like my ear was tuning in like a radio and just in one ear. And I mentioned it to Marty and he said, oh, the aliens are upgrading you. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> They're doing what? <laughs> well, tell them to rack off. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I know. I don't know. I think you got to have a sense of humour. There's stuff out there that we don't know. There's no good being fearful of it. Um, it's it's good to be curious, but probably not too curious. That possibly can get you into trouble. Yeah. Um, and they reckon uh, stay in the middle. I'm coming to Kentucky. I don't want them to come to Kentucky. <laughs> That's where I'm at. <laughs> Buddies. <Wow. laughs> Yeah, I agree, Michelle. It's better to stay neutral because there's yeah. always that grey area. And as soon as you bring ego into it, you're out. Hello, Bob. Um, yeah. Yeah, not not good. But there are lots of activity in the skies here. Um, I told you about that incident my mum had where she got, like, um, frozen to the bed while something hovered over the house. So she couldn't move. She didn't know for how long. That freaked her out pretty much. So um, freaked me out. We yeah. saw one out at um, back of Armadale years ago in the late seventies, and they've recorded it. Yeah, they've recorded it, and there's some guys that have investigated it. You could see that coming across, like. You couldn't tell 100% what it was. It was just a big ball that went across. We had this big bonfire, and, you know, we're all just sitting around playing guitars, you know, the good old days, and all of a sudden the bonfire went out. Bonfire, you know, big. Like just, just like that? Just out. Really? So that it was like charcoal. Wow. It was imagine, having, imagine having that power. Yeah. Oh, Kath, what's your most impactful paranormal moment? Okay, so uh, that's not just alien, is it? Where you can t anything most impactful. Mm. No, I think that one Grizzly and I had. Yeah. What was that one? Oh. Uh, It shook the earth a little bit and uh, a bit of a transformation occurred and had to react pretty quickly to make sure the the gang knew everything was okay so they could twaddle back quickly and relax. I think that's my scariest one. I don't usually have much action. You know, I'm pretty little Miss Practical, they call me. Um, so yeah, I don't pretty... have a lot of action. Yeah, I've seen some weird stuff. I think one that rattled me, didn't rattle me, it, it intrigued me, but because my because there's a ley line running under the house, my I sleep on top of it basically. And I remember I moved, I tried to put crystals everywhere to try and like bend it. 
because yeah. I haven't can't put the bed in any other position. So I tried to bend this ley line around, <laughs> <laughs> around the um, around me, and I think it might have worked a little bit because it wasn't long after I did that, and I saw all these people in purple robes traveling from north north to east along the ley line. So they basically walked right along the side of my bed while I was in it. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, what? Where are you going? Like, and all I could think of was, where are you going? And, and who are you and what's going on? And it was so um, surreal and I thought, what the hell is going on? And... I realized that they were traveling along the, the energy line. They had to be running along the energy line. They were walking, you know, through. And they meant for me to see them. Like, you don't see them unless they mean you to. And um, I worked out it was the High Council. Yeah. So that was interesting. That's important. Um, I felt, yeah, I felt. And it, I didn't realize it straight away, but something came up a few days later and, there was a picture and everything, and I went, that was them, that's them. <laughs> I didn't put it there. I didn't know. <laughs> yeah. I've got a similar problem. I've got a creek running right under my bed, and there's okay. absolutely no way I can move that either. And I've tried yeah. to do what, I've tried to do what you did as well. And um, you? But I've, I've done it with rocks. Like all underneath my bed is just rocks, like big beauties you know i'm um, crystals yeah yes. but big whoppers you know whoppers and yeah uh, i know i had um you gave me a piece of uh <laughs> big chunk of smoky quartz that you found at urella and um i don't really sound but it used to sit at the foot of my bed like i had you know and i've got rose quartz chunks like all raw ones that i've got all over the place and uh it's yeah and then the other day i thought it's not working for some reason they find ways to get around me so i had to go and order some more stuff so i got some uh no, well rather, kind of a new one a new crystal called hypersthene and yeah. an old one um gosh i can't even think of um it, it it counteracts um radioactive stuff um sugalite no not sugalite um you know you'd know it it's a a black one but it does the electromagnetic. I've I've lost what it is. But yeah, so someone sent me chunks of those to put under the bed as well. So um, <laughs> I've had to yeah. repair. One of my peers fell over a couple of weeks ago. No one believes me. <laughs> what if you what? Sure, like, like, thank you. Yes, yeah, sure I've like. got thank you. Yes, I've got yeah. um, you know wooden peers, and the other night. One of them fell over. So now I've got to go and fix the pier under my bedroom. Oh, no. <laughs> no crazy witch. You mean yeah. the stumps, the stumps on your house? Yeah. Oh. There's so much movement from this stupid, oh, sorry, I didn't mean that, great spirits. The creek that's running under the bed, like under the house, and then I've got the gold sluice that runs along the other side of it. So the creek runs into the gold sluice. So it's like a T-junction right where mm. my bed is sometimes the bed pops up like this like it just pops fluffy over here she'll be lying there on the bed you know on the end keeping my feet warm all of a sudden there's this mine's a king size bed like heavy timber and everything so it's mine. Quite, it, <laughs> it can only be in one part of the room because it, it won't fit anywhere else and I was sitting on it, look, doing stuff on my bed, and the bed started to like jump up and down, yeah. and and I'm looking around like, <laughs> and I'm going. I said to the cat, "Rags, are you under the bed? <laughs> Cut that out. That's not funny." Save it. Like, I did, and then I looked up, and the dresser, which has a, a mirror, and it's got this side, like side mirrors on. Um, hinges and it was the side things were going like this and then the window started rattling it was like the succession of stuff and I'm going 
I guess if you're not under the bed. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like you've got to bring around this sense of humour to be able to not totally freak out. Uh, you know, and your cat's going boop, boop, run out of the house screaming. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I just say, oh, right, oh, whatever, you know, and just let them do whatever they like, whatever's going on. Because the energy shouldn't be able to lift. I've got one of these, you know, those old um, mattresses. We used to buy them used. I don't know, 20, See that? years My ago. light just flickered. It's, um, it's got every seventh ball Stop is a talking, magnetic. You're exciting the spirits. <laughs> I haven't got mine on. Um, every second ball is a magnetic ball on the bed. And, like, when I move houses, you know, you get your muscly um, removalists coming in, you know. Oh, no worries. This thing, they go, what? You know, that because instead of having two people just to move this mattress, you need like 10 people, oh, not 10, but probably six because it weighs a ton, you know. But the magnetic balls, I imagine, would be reacting with, you know, the electromagnetics of the water underneath every now and again possibly. I don't know how a heavy bed mine's like yours big heavy posts and you know it's it's really heavy that the whole thing can just pop you know because yeah. i'm going oh, like you oh what's mine going did, on here did a dance it was dancing <laughs> freaky <laughs> like what the hell's going on here um yeah yeah so that that was an earthquake though not paranormal but it was definitely an earthquake um yeah. but they still there's a lot of bumps and bangs because of all the tunnels underneath the ground. They they still um, they still mining and they still use explosives. Yeah. So um, that you know, half of Bendigo is just tunnels. I'd hate to see if we had a big earthquake, what might fall into yeah. you know up the back. There's many mines that have been capped. But because they're so old now, the, the capping's starting to disintegrate. So yeah. if you fall in one of those, you'll never get found. They're they're pretty dangerous. Yeah. Um, so you've got to be careful out wandering around. It's similar um, around here because we've got all the old Chinese mines and that. Yeah. And, um, like, when we had the bad drought and then we had the floods, we had arsenic poisoning in the local water. For eight months, we were had to go and pick up water downtown and stuff like that because all the movement from the mines had stirred up all the arsenic. And, um, yeah, eight months we were buying water. I don't understand, Stingray. What are we decapitating? I have no I can't idea. I see those. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, but because of that, there is a lot of spiritual activity. Like when I first got here, there used to be this grey mist and... Like we're talking a fair size um, and it would like travel through like you'd be sitting there watching TV and all of a sudden this big grey cloud would just travel through the room, through the walls, go out the other side. <laughs> and at one point I think we had I had some friends here and their daughter <laughs> was in there watching TV and the lounge was turned around the other way that, at that point. Anyway, she came out of the house and wanted to go home because she was freaked out. There's something behind her, and I was like, "There's nothing behind you. Don't no. There's nothing in there. Nothing in there." And meanwhile, I'm thinking, "Oh yeah." <laughs> the clouds come through, and she's obviously like sensitive and and felt it. Um, but a man actually walked through. He walks through in line with the ley line as well, so he travels along the veranda. Um, but um, I haven't seen him for a while but he was in actual form um in a jacket how long, and how long ago did you see the council go past um that was last year that's interesting yeah it was i had a sense that they were going to a meeting like big meeting <laughs> Steam yeah Ray. we're not that vicious Steam Ray. <laughs> Mind caps were failing. Yeah, they do. The mind caps do fail. Mm. You never go off track out in the forest because. Um, yeah, you can fall in. Yeah. 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 You won't get found. Mm -mm. So, I don't know, so many paranormal stuff. 
That you all know. those tunnels remind me of that Appalachian. I've been looking at that Appalachian Trail lately, and um, trying to join a whole lot of dots there. And um, it reminded me I had to do this assignment for criminal psychology once, um, and and you, it was a profiling exercise, and mm. I chose the Dukes, which is a famous American family, um, and they were ferals. Like they lived up in the rocks, and you know they just hunted for food. They never went into the the towns and stuff like that. And then um the it was terrible like a terrible situation there a lot of abuse within you know the the family the cousins and all of that sort of stuff it was really heavy duty anyway they decided that they'd run out of um interbreeding within themselves so they decided here's my neighbor he'll be gone in a sec um they decided that um they'd use one of the daughters to you know fornicate basically with somebody else so they connected up to rich important i know i know i have to say it light, not lightly um so they connected up to powerful um people from the city the closest city nearby them it's probably one of these guys stingray and um they like they integrated, stop it. They they integrated with white men basically, but rich white men. And the rich white men were coming in, and they were taking their women and, you know, playing around. Um, and then they were going back to the city and not telling anybody about what they were doing. So then the white men, the and the lady started to have children, um, but these people were still living back in the woods, like. Ter terrible situation they are living in. Um, but the more children from this Duke family that integrated in with the cities and that, the more trouble, there was a whole lot of trouble that started up, um, you know, with crime and, you know, they couldn't get food. So the integration didn't work well. Um, and they were pretty much mindless um in a lot of ways as far as any form of education or any of that work goes so they were manipulated um abused but that was what they knew and this got me thinking to this crowd down at the appalachian trail there's a whole heap of tunnels in that all under uh, america basically um and they say these guys are in the appalachian trail yeah stingray they reminded me of this family because you you know they're calling them ferals. Um, they're furry, you know. They've got they're into bread, so some of them have got a big eye, and you know some of them have got weirdo hands and stuff like that. They're they're into bread, um, but they're all still living in all of those tunnels underground um, because they're talking about so many people that have gone missing on the Appalachian Trail. And the government and the feds and the national parks and all of that have gone quiet. They they won't get involved. Um, there's been times where they've got involved when there was a nine-year-old that went missing. Um, they all became Back involved. In yeah, exactly. I'm doing yeah. a show on that Monday. Oh, are you? Should I shut up? No, no. Go ahead. Okay. Because I've been into this lately. Um, yeah, so... Like originally, I think it was 1930 was the first sighting of this feral person, the people, um, and, you know, he saw this guy who's furry, long hair, wild, dirty. They've got this terrible stink apparently. Like they smell like vomit and um, all sorts of other horrible things and apparently they leave this stench. Um, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about, Norma. Um, because there's so many people. There was one recently in July that went missing off the track. Um, but it's been going on since 1930. And the first guy that saw them was in 1930. And um, they they came up to the window and totally freaked them out. Like, they're scary. Um, and because they're interbred and they're, they've got no fear, um, but they seem to be coming out. A lot more lately um but we've recently had one on the 24th and <laughs> uh, on the 30th 
on the 30th there was the body was found they blamed two of them on floods that the two of them just got swept away but um they also found like a pit that had heaps and heaps of bones and that in it that and they think that you know there's a whole heap more people missing that you know they're just not accounted for or that it's something else has been blamed for what's happened to them it's really interesting because interbreeding wise and um the way they live it reminded me of this duke family because the in the duke with the duke family even if one of them even if one of them became you know educated or whatever they never ever got away from having that name as bad people like yeah yeah um so like if anything happened around the district in that area they all got blamed whether they did it or not they oh let's just blame the you know the ferals but it was so, like socially interesting because even if they be, became good people, they would never ever live it down that their whole family was, you know, horrid. <laughs> but th this is what reminded me of this Appalachian lot because it goes back to similar timing. And this family, they lived in a similar situation in the rocks and the hills and, the, you know, they went hunting. They didn't even know what a person looked like pretty much and they were in mining areas as well which is also interesting because they had cave systems underneath that whole area as well that was up around new york i think from memory mm. but i'm i'm very interested in this appalachian one i've got all the names so far from 1930 on um that you know have been named as missing or unidentified you know unable to be found it's very yeah. interesting we had a terrible joke when I was when I was growing up because there's a mountain towns like there's mountain towns around. Um, it's like we had Kalani was one, and they, we used to say, "How do you recognize someone from Kalani?" And say, "Well, because they've got the scar, you know, where they removed the extra head and all this sort of stuff." So it's it's yeah. kind of a a totally um, yeah bit of a thing about mountain people that they are a little bit different in the way they behave and they come down out of the mountains once in a blue moon and um, and they interbreed, yes. There's, there's a lot of incest um, yeah. as well. So, yeah, hence that we used to have this joke about it. Um, the same I went for a job, you know, down um, the bottom of the Dorigo, way up the back of Upper Thora, Darkwood, Um Yes, yeah, I am talking about the Appalachia. I may be saying it incorrectly. Um, I went for this job. There were these people that lived right at the back of the valley. And you used to be able to ride horses down from off the top of the mountain. You could ride down and you could get into the valley um, from Point Lookout. And then you get right up to the far end of this beautiful, it's my favourite place. It, I, that's my favourite place Every out of everywhere I've ever been. There's this energy there that's unbelievable um but you, you could ride your horses down the mountain and then you could get to like the source of where the river began and it flows out to sea there was a family that lived there there was a husband and wife and they had kids then the <laughs> husband decided to get the wife's sister in to help with the kids um so more fornicating and more interbreeding they then got nannies to come um, you know, to help because they had like by this stage about 12 children. Um, it's funny also Michelle used to live at Kalani in Kentucky. Um, and uh, anyway, they wanted another nanny and I thought, oh, yeah, this will be interesting. I was like 17. I thought, oh, I'd love to live down there in the beautiful river, bloody blah, right? Anyway, the, they, came, they came out of the valley and came up to visit me, to interview me. I'll never forget it. It was terrifying, absolutely terrifying. You know, I said, oh, no, I'll be right, thanks, um, Yeah, you know, and let them go. Anyway, about a year after that, they hired other women, you know, sucked in pretty much the same way I would have got sucked in because it's absolutely beautiful place, like it's beautiful. 
Anyway, about a year after that, they decided they weren't going to let anyone into the valley from there on in. So all the hillbillies, because by this time there's like 18 kids, you know, they all decided to load up with their shoddies and wouldn't allow any of the riders or anyone else to continue through. Like it's like a one of those, you know, those tracks that you can go on the horses the whole way around the country. But so they put a stop to it. No way. And pe so they stopped all of that. This family to this day still live up there and they're full on like exactly like that. Scary. Yeah. Well, that, yeah. Um, I was telling Marty about the Bigfoot stuff you guys have to do on here and he's he used to do uh, kangaroo culling down um, on the east coast of Victoria, there's it's quite very mountainous in there between the border and the, the code, like below on the southern coast there. And um, he was um, out there one night. He had these two kangaroos lined up in a farmer's paddock, and he said this big, massive, um, hairy man um, stepped over the fence. And picked up the two kangaroos under his one under each arm, like they were nothing, and they no, didn't even they didn't even mind or respond or do anything. He just picked them up and stepped back over the fence and and headed off up the hill. I'm getting um goosebumps, like like <laughs> freaked out about it when I'm talking about it because that would freak me out. And he was like, "Huh, okay, well." Didn't have to shoot those two. <laughs> Kept on going. But he, he said there was no malice or anything like that. He just looked at him, stepped over the fence, picked them up, and stepped back over and just disappeared into the bush. Um, <laughs> well, actually, they do farm kangaroos now, Norma, here. It's in the supermarket, but it used to be just an Aborigine thing um, once upon a time. Yeah, they then they sold it at David Jones. Um, mm. for once, mm. I I don't like eating it. It makes me feel ill. It's so rich. Like I've tried it a couple of times. It's too rich, but there's no fat. Like it's a really good meat. There's absolutely no fat in it. So it's, it's good for you that way. But yeah. Well, you know, do you know that um, you're not supposed to you're not supposed to eat them when the grass is green. Apparently, only their tail because they're full of worms. Yeah, exactly. They're full of parasites. Yeah. Um, so there's certain time the Aborigines know certain times of year when they're when they're okay and when they're not. Yeah. Yeah. So um yeah, so that was interesting. So I thought, yeah, well I knew there was we had a big foot up near around the Nengo area. There's a big one up in there, um, which is up above the Brisbane Brisbane and up in that esk, you know, that mountainous rainforesty yep. area. I've got a mate that's just moved there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think uh, they, they realise. But there's one yeah. I'm going to go check out. One, um, they had a siding out near Dangas Falls. I'll go out and have a look at that another time. Did they? Yeah. And there was another one up um, near Deepwater. Well, that, because that's all gorge through there. Yeah, and that place I got lost the other day, I was telling Grizz, you know, I was in that area and all the sticks were, the guys freaked me out because I've been learning about all how the grass is flattened and how they make the matrix, you know, with the trees and stuff. It was identical to everything like that. It was right on the top of this tourmaline, you know, hills. And I was thinking, whoa, this is interesting. Yeah. But, but that was close to where one of the sightings had been. Yeah, um, in the past, like not many people over here will say, "Oh, yeah, I saw one." It's all they kind of keep it quiet. Yeah, I don't, I don't really want to see one. <laughs> Thanks. No, I, I was quite happy when I decided to get unlost out of that area the other week. Like there was something you could feel it, like, and then all the cockies, you know, the big white cockies. There, mm. there must have been hundreds. They all started flying around this circle. And then this whopper big kangaroo jumped out. Ba -boom, ba -boom, you know, I thought, oh, I think Catherine needs to go now. <laughs> yeah, and I, there's times when I go to go up the back, which has got some weird energy up there, and there are times when I'll go to go up there and I'll, I'll go, no, not today. 
it yeah. just doesn't feel right. There's this presence there or something that's not right. And I'll just go, nah, I'm not. Mm. Or, you know, or you get that feeling something's watching you. Yeah. Or somebody's watching you and you go, nah, not today, sunshine. Yeah. 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 I try and crack a joke to get myself out of there, you know, like anything. <laughs> I think um, I'll have to finish my staff off, you know, the, oh, yeah, because yeah. it's like, yeah, it's just it's taller than me. I, I reckon if I, if I had a um uh, some sort of weapon, I might I might feel a bit braver. But <laughs> I've thought about that, but because uh, like I went fossicking once, like one of my times, and and after I was just out there, you know, innocent, no one's property, it was all innocent, and um I can hear this poof poof. Poof, in the sand. Someone was having a shot at me. Um, and then I thought, hmm, I wish I had my baby, but, you know, that's against all the laws. And um, at that time, luckily, I wasn't one of, you know, I wasn't a shooter. But, yeah, that's um, right. With the Amish, like a lot of people that live on the land know when to get the best out of their um, produce. I like the, you know, the original people, they lived off the land or lived with the land, so they, they got very good at knowing when, what times of the year were best yeah. for, yeah, all that stuff. Yeah. It's, which, yeah. There's um a lot of books out now that talking about the pioneer stuff and how they made things to last or made things that didn't need refrigeration and all sorts of stuff. It's very interesting. Yeah, a lot of people in Australia are getting into bush food now, like the indigenous bush food. Well, that's okay, but I don't know that Australian bush can sustain everybody getting into bush food. No. They can eat cucarachas as much as they like. <laughs> There's plenty of those. <laughs> What's a cucaracha? Cockroaches. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yuck. I don't know, but you know how people are getting into eating crickets and that for protein and things like that now. And oh I'm no, thinking, that's, yeah, go for it. <laughs> that's the elite's idea of feeding us protein because they want to take away proper food from us. Yeah, exactly. No, let's not even get into that. That is just like di diabolical. Oh, no. Poor bloody crickets. Hey, little crickets. <laughs> the cockroaches. That's a different thing. Oh, who would? Oh, they're disgusting. Like, who would even? Oh, I, I can't stand even. them. Like, no, they're on no. my rat level and spidey level. I don't like cucarachis. Yeah, I'm with you, Norman. Gross. It's just <laughs> disgusting. I don't know. I think I'd rather starve. Me too. Mm, and tell me, how's Mr. Bossy? Well, um, I should tell you should we should tell some background story though, shouldn't yeah. we? Yeah, yeah, you can. Um, yeah, so I had a calf born during the week at night in an absolute downpour of rain, and yeah. he was wet and cold. I just had this feeling. I was like, I've got to go down and check the cow paddock. Um, I've just got to before I go to bed. So it was late at night. Um, and he was on the ground shivering and couldn't get up. And I was like, oh, gosh, here we go. Um, he was a big calf too. Jeez, he's a big, heavy, really heavy. So I was trying to get him up. And because the cows, two of the, yeah, I've had some dramas lately. So the cows are a little bit, um, they're a little bit, um, untrusting of me that you know I might take the calf and it doesn't come back and that's had to happen a couple of times because I've had to take a calf that's got hypothermia bring it up to the house resurrect it and then take it back down but occasionally it doesn't work and I don't get the calf back to them um so it was a hell of a job trying to actually get him up because the cows kept coming over and standing guard over him so that I couldn't get to him and and um, I'd have to talk to them and go, for God's sake, you know, you've got to just let me pick him up. He's got to get up off the ground. So I eventually got him up, but he was so heavy. 
so heavy and I was this close. I actually had the wheelbarrow and I was striding across the paddock with it to get him into it and bring him up to the house because he's not going to survive out here in the cold. It's wet and, and the mist rolled in and, you know, the moon shining down and, um, and I think I said to you I was expecting werewolves to, to just to appear out of nowhere. There was just like this creepy feeling just came in, you know, and I'm out there in the middle of the paddock and I'm thinking, geez, what's next? And, I, and then he started to walk because I'd got him up and he'd standing there just like, can't move and I'm like, he's not going to last. So he started to move. All was good. I left him there. But Kat's been talking to him because I brought her, her in on the job. I said, this calf's not going to make it through the night. We need to chuck zap him as much as we can. Can you can you come in and zap him also? So we were all like throwing energy at him to keep him warm and keep him upright and keep him drinking. And then the little bugger, the next two days, he would, he would he'd go and sit down and he wouldn't get up. He just go no, I'm 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 okay here. Thanks, you know I'm not getting up. And his mum would just she'd come and find me wherever I was, and she'd go come and go. They go oh okay, so he won't get up, huh? It must have been time for a drink. So I have to go over and I'd pick him up. Oh, he was so heavy, and I'd have to lift his back end and you know try and prop that up. Oh, terrible, terrible. So that went on for two days and I was telling Kath about it and then she's laughing at me because she had a, a conversation with him. He liked the fact that I was picking him up. <laughs> little Because I, I said, I think this calf's a bit lazy. I don't think there's anything <laughs> wrong with him. And the neighbours laughed at me and said, I think he's having you on. <laughs> I said, well, I can't just leave him there. So this went on for a couple of days, but I think Kath had a bit of a chat to him. So he's he's doing better now, but you wouldn't credit it, Kath. He's found a little cubby house that I had built for Stardust. Oh. And when it rained, it rained yesterday, I thought, oh, not again. So, you know, I'm down to the cow paddock and I couldn't see him anywhere and I thought, oh, no, you know, he's flat out somewhere in the in the rain. No, he was in, he was in the little, in the sh- little shed, tucked in there. He's a little wise one, this one. <laughs> I was like. None of the others would be that smart. I tried to put him and his mum in a proper yard and shed and she nearly ate me trying to do it. So I gave up. It's not worth it. You take take him then, whatever. And I tried to put him into a warm place, but uh, but he's gone and found it himself. So He's a real bossy little thing and smart, super smart. Like it looks at you like, huh, you know? Yeah. I've got this under control. I'm saying, no, you don't. (laughs) (laughs) Naughty little boy. He said, I got her filled. (laughs) She's breaking my back trying to pick me up. Yeah, it was so good, though, that, you know, he's frolicking about and, um, you know. Yeah. I honestly honestly thought that that was something was going to happen. You know, and I got a note from last night just before I went to bed and where I got my cows from at Tenerfield, which is up past you. Now, yeah. He's got, got the same breed, the Ger Brahmins there. And he said, he's well, he's been breeding for years now and he lost three calves this last week. Really? Females or? A female really? and two males, I think. Um, and he's he said he's never had anything like that happen. Did the same before. sort of thing, like with a pneumonia or? All different. That's interesting. Yep. Yep. So weird stuff kind of going on. It's not, there's cattle dropping dead all over the place for healthy cat, healthy animals. Yeah. yeah Good night, t- Godhead. Testify. No, no. Must be late over there, is it? Yeah, uh, going on 10 30. Oh, right. Not too bad. No. Yeah, so that lots of that of weird kind of stuff going on. People losing animals left, right, and center. That's weird. <laughs> I bet. How big are we talking? 
for this big or this big <laughs> monsters by the sound <laughs> i know they can get up to this long i've seen them here those Not flying big. ones we don't have oh no i don't like them um, but you don't get many inland do you like we don't no. get them here no i only get little little tiny ones occasionally yeah yeah and they usually come in out of the wood pile or something like that um yeah but on the coast, they're big, icky, disgusting ones. In the cities, that's where they get them. In um, Sydney, they've been building this great big new intersection in um, over at Balmain. And yeah. they, when they did it, they dug up. We're getting into some horrible conversation here. They they dug up all the rats' nests. And you, all brought the them rats up. you brought up the cockroaches. Yeah, I know. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, I did now. <laughs> But um, yeah, they they they're digging new tunnels in Sydney, and um, they disturbed all the underground rat colonies, and all the rats, <laughs> all the rats have spread all over the, like the whole side of Sydney that way, oh, and they've got a major cool. rat problem. But on the good side of things, with our our mouse plague, mice plague that we've had, some guys have just come up with the first sealed sheds so that the mice can't get into them it's the first one ever in australia first time it's been patented it's all sealed like a bunker um to protect our grain because we've got a major problem with mice still from the drought and the flooding so i don't know what you guys are doing over in america with all your grain have you got any left oh yeah there's grain yeah Expect there's grain Expect mice to come along. There's green until the moths get into it or the mice get into it. But yeah. oh, that's, that's a surprise. That. <laughs> that, maybe that's why we've got our little friends visiting so much. Try and help us clean up all the mice. Yeah, they a few pythons, pythons will take care of the rats and mice. Yeah. Um, and putty cats. Ducks are good at killing rats. Mm. Um, I don't like rats. No. But it's they've only just, like with all the technology we have, they've only just made a rat-proof shed. Like, hello, what? I know. This don't is a, because it, like, because of the grain issue with the Ukraine and that, um, like a lot of the grain and everything is getting blown up pretty much um so and also with the new different land stuff that's going on in australia where you have to pay 180 dollars per square foot or something or you're not allowed to plant here or you're not allowed have you heard about all of that no um yes i know all about there's big agenda coming very big it started like you know, so they now they yeah. So, so now there could be a major shortage for grain worldwide. Um, and now, apparently, if a missile accidentally goes into Romania, Romania is one of the NATO countries, and that allows retaliation immediately. Um, and this is another grain issue if you're thinking of world food supplies. It's a big problem. And also um, there's, I think there's 28 countries involved with the NATO mob and uh, they can totally retaliate. It's really serious at the moment going on over there. Just takes – and how do you know if it's where it came from? Like, you know. Is this another part of their little set up their babies games, you know, that they just want to blame somebody else to create some more havoc, you know, and uh, it's getting really over the top because you just, can't tell what's going on. Well, you can't believe what's going on because nothing's actually 100% truth. Yeah, that's um, right. Too many people gonna, are getting sucked into the baddie side. that are not allowed to talk about at the agenda. <laughs> no. Um, or you know because that's conspiracy theories um so we can only go on the fact but if you look at history um 
whenever there's a depression, it's followed by war. Grizz could back me up on that. Mm. As yeah. soon as the diamonds and the gold go out of the souks in the Middle East, you know there's war. Mm. It's the only way to for them to restore economy, the economy. Um, and cross the borders without mm. money. And wipe out a few people, more people um, as uh, well. So, yeah. So, hey, Sarah, welcome to the show. Hi, Sarah. Nice to have you. Wayne Gracie. No, that's my Julian Assange, Stingray. I was given one um one of this shirt by one of the chiefs because I thought, you know, I support Julian, I always have, always will, and everything it stands for. And um I was given one of these at one of the protests in Sydney. I love it. <laughs> um yes, Norma, we do I do know Ricardo Bossi. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, Kath, have you heard of Ricardo Bossi? Um, the guy that's South Australian. Oh, no. Oh, he's trying to get together a political party that. Oh, yes, I've seen that guy on the YouTube things. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not into politics at all. Like, I'm a bad girl. (laughs) I'm into freedom of speech and stuff like that, but not politics. Well, I'm very suspicious of any anybody so um yeah i'll believe it when i see it kind of thing yeah it's yeah. hard very hard so sarah's been here since the cockroaches would it <laughs> <laughs> oh dear you you missed like that. that's not you missed... i don't want to talk about cockroaches. that's cat she missed, the... that. <laughs> she missed the roo carrying part of it <laughs> well i thought that was pretty pretty wild scenario like yeah now i don't know after watching some of Grizz's stuff whether he actually like whether this big person actually hypnotizes the animals to be able to pick up a kangaroo like two big kangaroos like that's quite a feat that's massive weight and for them not to struggle at all I tell you what, Marty must be cool, calm, and collected type. Um, he's ex ex paranormal investigator. Oh, okay. An ex bodyguard. Um, and he's a deliverance minister. So, yeah, he's got to be cool, calm, and collected. Yeah, exactly. But what a godsend to send him to you. Oh, he makes me mad because I sometimes <laughs> I'll be sitting at the thing and I go, I just saw. Such as a blah, blah, blah. And he goes, yep. What do you mean, yep? <laughs> Did you see it not say anything? Yeah, I didn't want to alarm you. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> bloody hell. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, no, he's 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 good to have around when there's shit going down. Oh, am I allowed to say that on American? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As long as you yeah. don't say the C words like consciousness or um, oh, okay, no, there's three, no. three now. No, no, he's good, and there's not much he hasn't seen or dealt with. Uh, no. Talking paranormal, I mean, he's been thrown downstairs. That's how by, um, yeah, mostly spirit. down that way, or diff- has he lived in different areas? No, he's always been in Victoria. But there's there's a lot of um, you know a lot of paranormal activity in the old jails, you know all the yeah. historical, the old asylums, the old hospitals, and then yeah. there's some of the old homes, um, historical homes and things like that. Yeah. So, and some people just take their demon with them wherever they go. Exactly. So, do you know? <laughs> They just seem to attract them for some reason. So you can do a clearing, um, you know, and it comes back because it's them that's actually attracted them. Or they'll get out of that house because it's haunted and they'll go to another one and it becomes haunted. Exactly. Um, yeah, so it's 
yeah, it's quite it's so, a fascinating subject. Ta um, talking about the paranormal, like because I've only been involved recently, um, and I've noticed now that it, it's everywhere. Everyone, there's heaps of shows. Um, everybody's speaking about things more openly. You know, upstairs, all stairs, um, and I. One of the paranormal groups I commended recently um, asked, you know, what do you feel is a, a no-no when you're investigating? Um, to me, because I was already upset about a situation that I'd seen and um, it, it sparked me along, um, I thought it was fantastic that they'd brought up the this question because they're, they're, they're like what code of ethics do the investigators and that work under you know like we we talk about you can carry on energies you can pass them here you can pass them there the kids can pick them up they don't even know then they've got mental health issues and then they're wondering why and bloody bloody blah, blah, blah do is so the, the this other team that instigated this conversation i thought it was brilliant you know because then we were able to bring up code of it you know code of conduct ethics, privacy, um, you know, all the protection uh, necessities. I thought it was really good for them to bring it up because, there's, like you say, there's a lot of people are playing games um, with this Microsoft thing. That's going to be pretty brilliant. Um, exactly standing. That's right. Um, Just go back to know, Rebecca, um, Rebecca's question. Um, she wants to know what's what attracts them. Um, so there's a, a number of many different things that will attract them into your energy field. And um, so if you've got trapped spirits for say, I'm not going to talk about demonic ones, but if you've got trapped spirits um, for whatever reason, they're, um, it's, it's a passion or an emotion that they're actually um, stuck here with. So there's un, some people call it unfinished business, but it can also be, an attachment to something in the house or an energy in the house or an event that happened in the house, say we're talking about a house or a building. Um, now, people can, and they need they need energy, they like energy, they like to feed. So if, if, say, for example, that they were an alcoholic in this lifetime, then if someone comes in who likes to drink, then... They will They're attach them to that person to get that sensation, get that energy feel um, or smoke, you know, if you're a smoker, um, especially if you're into other stuff as well and that, and they were too, they'll be attracted to that. It, it allows yeah. them into your energy field. Um, so many different things. It, it's all about them being attracted to that energy and then if they, if they can get something out of that, they'll hang around. Yeah. Um, that particular person and can make them quite sick yeah um, like Pat said like you make them quite ill I'm also believe that some of the kids that have been put on um their problem child children and they've been put on drugs like prescription drugs I feel they are they are then open to that as well Me too. yeah and yeah. also um kids that have been put in front of video games Yep. Um, yep. And a, a lot of TV. I also think that that it, it is an attraction as well and that changes the way that their brain works and then they they can get into even being very interested in anything um, paranormal like Ouija boards and um, mm. things like that <laughs> without knowing what they're doing and that's exactly. that involves them in exactly. as well. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, so you sometimes you don't realize you've invited them in, but you've actually done it. Exactly. Yeah. I hope that answers your question, Rebecca. That was a long way around, that wasn't it? But anyway, no, you're um, right. Like that, you don't. People don't realize what they're spreading if they're not careful, and on yeah. what levels they're spreading it, and also when they're, I call them energy suckers, like leeches. You know, they'll suck you dry, and that's their intention. So, you know, then they'll move on to the next one, drain them dry. Um, the problem is if a couple of those ones connect up with each other, um, the suckers become more and stronger 
And this is why I was so proud of this team to bring up these questions um, because, you know, the ones that are out there that are just playing games to make a bit of money and don't really know what they're doing are quite a danger, you know, to all of us. So well, they hold, team, they hold these, um, take people through um, these buildings like on ghost tours and stuff like that, and they certainly do not um, protect them at all. And they exactly. can pick up all sorts of stuff in there, especially if they go in there and they're really afraid. Um, and you've got murderers or, you know, deranged psych psychotic exactly. people, uh, spirits, they're going to be attracted to the fear. They go, oh, she's afraid, goody, you know. <laughs> exactly. Here's a target, let's go, yum, yum, you know. like Yeah, yeah. it's so, of, so easy. The, because of the, my background, again, you know, with information security and that, the, all of this is always ticking through my mind. And the same thing, I don't know if you've heard, Michelle, there's a new thing out for mummies that are, you know, a bit worried about their little kitties that if they go running away from the TV or their game station or their phone for 10 minutes and they can't find them, they're putting tracking devices on their ankles, anklets, similar to the ones that the guys have on bail, which I'm finding very interesting because, and also I tracked all the information about who made them, what company was involved, blah blah which just gives me the horrors straight away um the hertz wise if there's control over a certain band that is dangerous <laughs> i think you're safe rebecca <laughs> Uh, yeah, so what's next? It's like, okay, it won't be a tracking thing. It'll be a microchip. Well, they've already got those. But, like, they can they can control. Like, this is where I'm big on my information security controls, you know. And if you've got a whole heap of kids that are wearing these little anklets, you know, oh, Johnny's bored with the PlayStation. He's run off to the next TV somewhere else and, they're, you know, mummy's, not interested um that if you've got a whole lot of them on they're open targets to disappearing you know on mass like oh i'm so against it. it gives me the horrors absolute horrors that they're doing this well they started to do it to livestock down here so that if they livestock get stolen that they police can track them yeah, they're like it's good in some senses, but yeah. I keep thinking frequency and bands and, you know, you know like if you're a trucky, you know, you've got your receivers, your um, scanners and all of that going on, um, there's certain, you know, there's, there are ways that you can breach the code kind of thing and hook up into other bands if you know what you're doing kind of thing. So... Mm -hmm. To me, they're putting those children as a target, a possible mm. or potential target. Mm. So Sarah says she smudges with four sacred medicines, et cetera, et cetera, um, which is great. That That is good. Um, and that used to work really, really well. But what I'm finding is that with the veils thinning between us and spirit world, that's why people are seeing more stuff. And also a lot of these old traditional methods are not working. No. That's what I'm seeing. So yeah. you really have to be very careful about what you invite in. Um, and I loud and clear on your instructions to your boundaries. Mm, you know, cutthroat. Quick intent, no, nah, that's it. I won't accept this, bloody blah, blah, blah. You know, bossy and no fun and games kind of airy fairy. You, well, it does bossy. come down to your vibration and the frequency, your frequency and your vibration. And if you're not going, if you can't keep your vibration frequency high, then, you know, no amount of sage is going to help you if you're in a funk. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes even it may take a few sessions and probably with someone a good healer or a good shaman yeah. to to um to deal with it because it's yeah. getting tricky they're getting 
they're getting trickier. Yeah. Yeah. Or stickier. Yeah. Um, that word mm. keeps coming up everywhere. Tricky, tricky, you know. Mm. They're, they're playing games. They're stickier. playing. Yeah. I used to, Norma, um, used to help with clearings. Um, but I'm empathic and I did a few and then I said no because I was ended up bringing them home with me because I would end up w with all the background story on how they got there and did that, the trauma behind why that they were lo left there and all that sort of stuff. And then because I was empathic about it and felt sorry for them, um, I we ended up bringing them home for it and then it took me a few days to um, get them to pass on or pass over. And, look, I did. It was good in that way because I could actually get them to go to the right place for healing. So that was a, a great result. Um, but I just it freaked me out at the time. I was just I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready for the, for the um, what's it, the... Um, the takeaways the responsibility <laughs> of it <laughs> but did and you do one, it as a, a surrogate or did did you have two people and have one as the guide and one as a surrogate we or did, you just did, did it, it by yourself no i did it together um it's good if you've got someone else with you know if you've got you've got different gifts because you're working on different kind of um wavelengths and you can work together and and then see whether the information is actually um, <clears throat> correct, you know, like you, you're getting both getting the same type of thing. There's talk in one of the modalities at the moment um, that do all of this and they're, they're having a big debate um, and there's, first of all, they said that when you're clearing, we're a little bit back on string theory here, um, when you're clearing that, um, first of all, they said go all the way back. All of a sudden now I'm finding this fascinating. I got quite cranky about it. There's, they've changed their minds now and they're saying when you're clearing and healing um, not to go back to the full ancestry. I thought that was very interesting. This is coming from one of the big modalities that make a lot of money, you know, like that you do three or four different courses. You're talking two and a half grand a course. Um, now all of a sudden the chief, the boss man, is saying no when you're doing your clearings, you know, for PTSD or uh, clearing of houses or whatever, not to go back through the ancestry. And I'm thinking, what? You know, what? Uh, I, I think that I think that that could be, yeah, controversial because there's times when you should and times when you shouldn't. So there is, yeah. But Sarah says that it still works for her and that, yeah, Sarah, and probably because your vibration is high, your frequency is high and you're used to working with them and, as you said, it's been handed down in tradition to you so it's not new. But I'm just talking about people like grabbing a sage stick and going, oh, might have an entity and I'll just sage myself or whatever. I think that doesn't, it's getting to the point where it doesn't work. Welcome, Sarah, anytime. Yeah, I'm glad you joined <laughs> in, Sarah. No, we welcome your um your input, and you know definitely they are they do help. Um, yeah. But I still believe that your intent and your your vibration, your frequency is is coming into play now. That the, things have changed, um, in the frequency. So yeah, that's just what I believe, and just what I've seen. So, but no, yeah, the stuff. I don't know that that's. There is times when you should and times when you shouldn't. That to me, like if I'm doing an investigation, that grey area in my world needs to be investigated. Um, so that. <laughs> yes, Rebecca, it stinks. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> yeah. I guess it's meant to. It irritates the. <laughs> irritates the demons. <laughs> Yeah. Sorry, interrupted. No, that's all right. I interrupt you all the time. <laughs> Do 
but yeah, that's um that created like a three hour discussion um, that I had. Um, be, we it ended up going in all directions because um, I appreciate you know every all the opinions, but as an investigator, um, there's all these connections. You know, you might have a a family that are I don't I'm not being rude or anything maybe you've got a family in the house that are catholic at one stage and then you go back and you've got another family that were anti-catholic this is a bad example but an example um you know you've got different beliefs um and then maybe you know you go back another ancestry group and they're neither um so if you're respecting all of the cultural and uh religious or whatever their beliefs are then it felt to me that to be able to do a f to understand fully i had to go a fair way back so as not to cross any you know um boundaries of the current kind of thing like i didn't feel i could just do one era I felt I had to go back more than one era to be able to get a full understanding of what may have gone down. It, it, this is going back with the string theory. This is why I kept going further and further because to break the cycle are you, involved, are, you just doing, are you just doing the ancestors in this lifetime, like in this, on this, or are you doing past life? All the way back to the beginning. Because that's a big job. Some I people, have, but I some people to have, have had many um, incarnations. Yeah, plus no. This is why I, when um, I was upset, you know, and I was trying to break this cycle that I was on with my string um, to undo all those little knots, I was crying for quite some weeks because I was actually crying for the whole string, not just my part. Well, clearings can do that. You can become very emotional, um, which is good because, as I said, that's releasing everything. Um, stop, stop storing it in your body. Um, because, but it can be handed down through the ancestors. As you yeah, know, that's right. Like cellular memory. But yeah. there's also the past life stuff as well. And yeah. some of the past life stuff you don't you sometimes don't want to bring you want to cut that you don't want that integrated but there's a lot of stuff good stuff that you want to keep and yeah yeah bring forward yeah. autistic 40 year old and they moved into you and had a behavioral issue since so she was wanting for house cleaning with help yeah definitely um when my son my son is on the spectrum um he's now 22 but when he was um four or five um we lived in a house and everything was fine in the house, um, but he, but then the the elderly man who owned the house because we were renting it went to a home, and then he died, as often happens when they when they head off to in care, they don't last very long. So he died, and then my son started coming in and getting into my bed at two a.m. in the morning, consistently. And I was like, what the hell is going on? So he did this one night and I thought, oh, but I'll just go and get in his bed. So I went and got in his bed and I'm going off to sleep. And then all of a sudden I woke up and I was like, I was being sat on by something invisible. I could not breathe. I could not move. Um, it was terrifying. And all I could do was pray in my mind because I couldn't breathe, I couldn't speak. And in my mind I just called in Jesus and everything that I could think of. And it, then it released me and I thought, no wonder he's coming into the bed every night. So I reckon the guy had come back, he'd built the house, he was attached to the house. And um, so I quickly... Um, pulled everything out of that room and I changed my son's room to the next room and he stopped he stopped coming in 
to the bed. So it was ju he just was in that room. You know, he's coming in. The activity was in that room. So we moved on from there not long after that because he actually, this guy started to get really angry um, because they put the house up on the market and we decided that we couldn't buy it. Um, so we would move out. And when we made that decision, he started um, grabbing the back of my collar as I walked mm. through the front door and pulling me backwards. Like it was, yeah, just, yeah. So nah, yeah, definitely to answer your question, definitely, yeah, yeah. Um, especially kids on the spectrum, they're a lot more sensitive than you think, like really, really sensitive. And he could be picking up um, that as well. And there could be, activity happening my son wouldn't have spoken about it but then when I think back to myself in my childhood I used to wake up screaming every night and my parents could not placate me and I couldn't tell them what was wrong so yes it definitely could be something I would be changing his bedroom I would be putting the selenite crystals in um all the you know high vibrational stuff yes yeah, high functioning yes very sensitive they're highly gifted um little super gifted peoples and super sensitive and they can be super gifted in the psychic area as well so um yeah i would change rooms get someone in to do a house clearing um over there as well yep it's important too, I think, with these kids that are gifted in, you know, with autism or on the spectrum or ADHD or PTSD, um, they do need guidance, a lot of guidance. I know a lot of the kids won't talk about it or, you know, they'll get bullied at school if we talk about it, but we have to talk about it because these kids are gifted and they're coming up through the ranks um, and they really do need to know a little bit about energy um, mm -hmm. and what to yeah, look out for. Yeah. Yeah, because, more. yeah, because these kids and some some people believe that a lot of the kids are being targeted. These, these kids that are on medication and stuff like that um, specifically because they want to shut them down. They don't want them being strong and gifted and, you know, with the energies and all of that. That's one talk that goes on about the medication with all of the, you know, the Ritalin and all of that. Yeah, but, I don't know. My son was, I would refuse to put him on any of that. Um, yeah, I, they are, those types of drugs are. They don't. So, so they can control them. And because exactly. um, the education system has failed um, because they've changed their, um, Oh, <laughs> that my throat's going off. I'm like, <clears throat> he's like, um, yeah, but they're gateways to more drastic drugs. So you'll find kids that have been on that for a long time and they're the ones that end up doing the heroin and the, all that sort of stuff later, mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the big stuff. Yeah, and go down, can go down the gurgler if it's not caught. Yeah. Yeah, the, it's the the gifted like look ADHD children and ASD children and others who have um, dyslexia, um, all that sort of stuff. They they really can't survive in the current school system because they've gone to this airy fairy, um, you know, use your imagination. So they've not given them many boundaries and they're not giving them any structure for them to follow and they've setting them up to fail. So that's the really idea. Yep. Yeah. And it's very soul destroying for them. And then yes, they get bullied. They don't want to go to school. They don't learn all that sort of stuff. And yet they are so gifted. Exactly. They, don't need, they don't need to be sitting in the seat or anything like that. No, that's right. You know, they're they're really made not to belong mm -hmm. and that crushes them like yep. not being able to belong not fitting in here not fitting in there that's all part of the yeah uh, uh, you know like you, you can homeschool definitely homeschool they yeah, learn more fantastic. at home um <clears throat> you know just as you said doing the gardening like norma said and doing some cooking 
um, like yeah. it's cooking science. You know, you yep. can turn yep. any subject into a school subject. My, um, my periodic table came in real handy with its crystals because I said, well, look at this one, you know, and that was a gateway, you know, into having the discussions about energy, you know, or, oh, look, the cat's just chosen this one, you know, like, oh, I must like this one. That one must be vibrating at a diff. you know, there are different ways to educate the kids without making them feel like, you know, I'm airy fairy, you know, what are you doing, mum, that type of scene. You can bring it in via the science. The periodic table I found brilliant because you yeah. could discuss so many different things. And then um, experiments, we created experiments, you know, with tomato plants and stuff like that and adding crystals to the soil or, yeah. Norma, selenite is my go-to, white selenite, raw white selenite. Big chunks of it. It's pretty cheap. You can make a wind chime out of it. <laughs> um, it can't be tampered with. It's high vibrational. It can't be tampered with. Um, some of the denser crystals can be, um, they need cleansing, lots of cleansing, but selenite does not. So it's good to put under the bed. It's good to put on the windowsill. Um, yeah, even like little ones. You can get bags of little ones too and you can stick them around everywhere. Um, yeah. Kat's holding up a carnelian, I think, from what, what I can see, which is a cleanser. Yep, natural cleanser like the selenite. Yeah, it always it's good for creativity too. Um, yeah. Carnelian is really good. Um, this stuff's water soluble, though. You got to be what they say. The Akashic records are um, inscribed in selenite. You, that's interesting. Mm, if you split them, they, there's all little like. They're like asbestos. I don't They've know. got all these fine needles, you know, like when yeah. they break. Yeah. Um, under the bed, make sure it's running in the same direction as the spine. Mm. Um, crystals Smoking for ASD. Crystals for ASD. I go for the heavy duty ones there. Um, like the Smokies, the Tourmaline. I've found that uh, Fluorite is a really good one. Uh, yeah. That covers all emotions and um, all your energy centres if you get one that's, you know, fully coloured. And I, mm. I quite like Kyanite as well. Blue Kyanite's good. Um, it's good for the um, throat chakra because often they have problems um, expressing themselves because they, they're on a different wavelength to us. Excuse me while I go look for my crystal ball. <laughs> yeah, no worry. I'm doing the same thing. Yeah, like this is kyanite. This this one's polished. That's good quality. You don't often see stuff like that. And um, this is natural blue kyanite. You can get it in different colours. There's a green and there's another colour as well, but the blue is your communication centre. I've, I've got my turquoise on. Usually I will over talk. I can only leave this on for a, a day, but this is protection. I am right into protection. Uh, tom, uh, turquoise, tourmaline are my first go-tos. Um, but I love obsidian as well. I find that's good around the kids because it's gentle. Um, the black tourmaline is like refre reflective, so it'll bounce negative energy straight back to the I owner. Can't find my original book, but it'll be here somewhere. It's probably out where I use it the most. But and one, amethyst is a good one for kids. It's gentle, but all those will need cleansing. But if you keep carnelian in the in the mix, then you don't really have to do that either. Yeah, and also some stones are porous, so if you're going to run them over, you know, with water, though, it'll wreck them. Um, full moon, if you don't know if, what the, you know, your values are with the different stones, if they're porous, if they could take the water or not. Um, some of them won't like salt you at all. Um, I find full moon the best way for cleansing um, or with the feather smudging techniques good but mostly full moon energy at the moment. These blue moons, holy dooly. We've got some beautiful energy coming through here this month. 
And then the eighth of the eighth to the Lions Gate opening. Very good. So get some water <laughs> Don't start that again. <laughs> no, I'm not. Today, our card for today, for, for our show, today's the bear. And the bear, oh, the bear symbolizes healing, divinity, invulnerability. The bear has symbolized divinity and healing in many cultures. The Ainu people of the northern islands of Japan believe the bear was a mountain god. In India, bears are believed to prevent disease. Children are allowed to ride on a bear's back to avoid sickness. And among the Fino Ugric peoples, the bear was the god of heaven. The bear has figured prominent, prominently among Native American peoples who regarded it as a spirit helper. This painting of a bear woman dancing with rattle recalls the Pawnee Indian story of bear medicine women, in which a girl born with a bear spirit has the power to heal. It's nice. Yeah, bear medicine is very good for healing. Yeah. Very good. All right, saying um, some of the quartz is the new quartz is coming out. Rosora quartz is quite good for um, for them as well. But look, just as a protection, I, I definitely go the selenite. Um, they do need um, water, lots of water. Um, yep. Their their brains. Um, overheat when they're overstimulated so they need lots of water and desensitizing they're hugely sensitive but yeah. they can they can come through it um, and I know many people try to like wrap them in bubble wrap and go oh you know He's running around naked because he can't, he, his clothes are too scratchy or whatever, whatever. Well, you, you need to get, get on that. <laughs> yeah. Because they, they do, they can learn that their a brain is, can reprogram itself. It's, it's, you know, because they're, 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 they're wired differently. Yeah. So there's certain pathways that aren't connected yet. They're always a couple of years behind in maturity. Um, they find socialising very difficult. Um, they they don't get the cues and things like that. Um, and this you can, like I desensitise, you know, going into shopping centres, um, fluorescent lights, very bad, very, very bad. They can hear them. Yeah. Um, they're... they're, they're their hearing, their their sense of smell and everything is, you know, certain um, textures in their mouth. Yep. Um, but you do need to try to desensitise them. I used to do a tag team with mine in the shopping centre. Otherwise you need, couldn't get the shopping done. So no. you'd go in as soon as you started to, like, you know, do the thing, you get him back out into nature. Someone would stay with a trolley, get him back out, walk him around in the fresh air and sunshine and whatever, bring him back in. Um, till till now that he can actually, you know, go into a shopping center, he can't stay there like forever. You know, he is going to get triggered by certain things, but he's now more aware of I've got to get out of here because this is yep too overwhelming for me. Do you, you know. do you notice that all the learning areas where the kids go to, um, all fluoro? You go to uni, you go to school, you go to play group, all fluoro. So yep. instantly they're stirring them up and putting them on fl fight and flight mode, basically, um, mm. you know, totally. because the, yep. the frequencies are not, they're static to their minds because their minds are so good, like brilliance, like mm. some, you know, like everyone's gifted in different ways. Some mm. of them are gifted in multiple ways so that the learning when oh it's so difficult for them but and yeah. that's why it's important you know to talk about energy you know they're smart enough to understand energy you know and how it affects things and you know you can show them plants and you know stones and outside you can relate everything to the natural energies around whereas you know with your school like i one child i was 
with, um, super, super intelligent. She'd be asking questions to the chemistry teacher, the big chief of chemistry, and the chemistry teacher could not answer her questions. These were in accelerated classes specifically for gifted children to be able to integrate because they can't integrate with the same age people. They usually integrate with elders that are smart so they can hold full conversations. This teacher ended up bullying the child because she couldn't answer the questions. Nothing was done about it because there's no way the school's going to say, oh, well, you know, she couldn't answer, you know. So all the way through they're being affected by things that, you know, we take for granted with most, you know, with all children. But you have children that are underachievers they have the exact same problems as the overachievers and I've found the overachievers are often missed out because they think, oh, well, they're smart, they're doing all their homework, you know, but that's not what's going on. They're, they're being segregated the smarter they become, you know. Like, you know, you've got your genius kids that are at uni. Um, here you go. Um, and Dara's, are you talking about the glass... The Endera glass crystals, Norma, because I'm I'm thinking that's what she's talking yeah. about. Have you Great heard about term. the And you know yeah. they've got their laptops, they've got their phones, they've got all these different hertz upsetting their vibrations all the time, and their frequency. It's ugh. yes, Norma is talking about. And Dara is a specific um like glass crystal that comes from a certain place in over in um, the States somewhere. It only comes from one place. Um, I do believe that I that's know. true. But what I do know is that there's lots of um, knockoffs. So to actually get a hold of an actually true, like, piece of it is probably um, nigh impossible. Um, Australia has them too. Okay, I haven't heard of the Australian ones. Me either. Uh, no, I'd have to look that up. I was aware yeah. of the ones in the States, but I know there was a lot sold because uh, someone sold me a piece and then I think they retracted it later. There it is right there. So it looks like a piece of molten glass. There's some of oh, them please. now these days are created and there are also some of them that people are calling different names and geologically they're incorrect. Yeah, it's just a big chunk of glass. And it's got it's even sharp on the on the edge and it comes in different all different colours. Is it an so, obsidian? Is it an obsidian based stone? Well see it's definitely similar to obsidian, but the only obsidian I've ever seen has been smooth. Have you seen so the green it, stuff? Like Yeah. Yeah, I've got a piece, I've got a sphere out in the kitchen, but I I've never i I've never heard of that stone. Yeah, yeah. Is this it only new out on the market or? No, 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 they've been out for a while. Um, I didn't know Australia had them though. I'd have to talk to my crystal expert. Um, there's people out there who can talk to the crystals and feel their energies and, and that What's type what? of thing. And Endara. I don't think you'll find it in the crystal Bible. No, it's a new one. No, it's not. <laughs> oh, isn't it? I've never heard of that one. Yeah, like no. you've got anhydrite. That's not the same family. Mm. It's just like a chunk of glass. It's like, yeah, glass has been melted. And that's it that can happen. Like the amount of, you know, brown volcanic areas and stuff like that. It's yeah, it looks volcanic. Like, just like molten glass. So I forget what the properties are of it though, Norma, because I was like, oh yeah. Maybe. <laughs> yes, Maybe so. There's a lot of. I'll um, have to look it up. Yeah, same. I've never heard of it. I would believe that it's true. Yeah. I don't know if you'd get a hold of a piece, though. I mean, you know, that diamonds are formed in the same way. So. Anything's possible these days. Like um, with what they're doing in China, they, they're getting a base, say a matrix, you know, a, a natural base that's real, you know, 100% natural, real, out of the 
rocks. And then they're actually growing crystals um, or different minerals and that, and they're attaching them to the natural um, matrix. So when you're dousing, and the same with beads, they're reconstituting stones and putting a little bit of the real stone in and then all the rest of it's reconstituted. So when you're dousing and you're checking out what's real and what's not, if you've got a combination of real and not, you've got to be very careful with your dousing. All right, yeah, that's that's um, that's a bit clever, isn't it? It's I never, thought, I never thought to douse it. No, I always yeah. douse them if I'm... Usually I can feel by the touch that they're, you yeah, know, it, they're not it's real. Not or, fast. It's very but with these ones, if you're dousing and they're half and half, then you have to refine your questions, you know? Like, is this, is the matrix real? Is this crystal real, you know, natural? So, yeah. yeah. This one, as I suspect, is not real. Hi, Sean. <laughs> hey. I was just saying hello to Sean. Yeah, no, that it's not real. But they are, they are, they are real. There are real ones. Yeah. Mm. But there's but lots good. of lots of dodgy merchandises out there too. Yeah. So, um, I, and definitely, like you said, I mean, especially spheres. Um, they're just making them up to look like. Um, yeah. I know one lady who bought a sphere. I forget what it was, but the paint started flaking off it. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> she had to take it back. Get them. I recommend back. people join a lapidary club, you know, and then they can go out and find their own things. They can cut facet. They learn all the geological, because there are stones also out there that are poisonous and are very dangerous that you do not touch. Um, mm. A lot of people don't know about those. Then you've got the arsenic ones that you know qualities that'll flake off and so if you're dealing with them you'd need goggles or you need a mask it's not as clear cut as what people yeah. think Rebecca says they're making diamonds out of people's ashes yeah, yes, they yeah. Are. and the moissanites you heard of those the fake diamonds they're beautiful she wants to know whether the vibration reflective of the deceased yeah Residual energy, maybe? Mm, I don't know. They'd be put under a whole lot okay, of pressure. Fine. I don't know right, how to answer. Let me ask. No, Kathleen. I would, would, yeah, I wouldn't, um, I don't know, I wouldn't hazard a guess. I don't think that's interesting. Uh, once they've been put under that much heat and pressure, you wouldn't. I asked if um, they were carrying any residual energies. It mm -hmm. said no. No. But you know that there's a few questions involved in that. That's just one question. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. Interesting. Like Interesting question. Um, yeah. Do they think that it's? You know, are they doing it because they think it's going to hold the same, held some sort of vibration of the deceased person? I don't know. I don't think so. It's I think just, they're just a memorable making money. piece to uh, remember somebody by yeah. instead of uh, having ashes in the urn or ashes around the neck in a cylinder. Uh, they're making jewelry out of it. Yeah. yeah. It's like a, a different form of carrying piece yeah. around, really, I guess. Which is nice. Doing... I, mean, I really feel that that would be the intent. There would be what puts the vibration into that of the wearer that every time they look at it, they remember their, that person, then that definitely that is going to be more important than yeah. that that's going to actually keep the memory alive. I like the tree life. growing idea as well where people are using it to as like a pod for growing trees and things. That's mm -hmm. a nice idea too. Yep. You know, ashes to ashes. <laughs> yes, we can, we can become a tree. <laughs> I like that. I wouldn't mind being a tree. Black opals, mm -hmm. yes. I like black opals, especially harlequins, Sean. They're my fave. <laughs> can you hear my dog? Yeah. <sighs> now, one of the girls are on, on heat, so he's being driven crazy. Can't get to them. 
Sorry I'm about that. I wonder if that is oh. how Stingray sounds. <laughs> <laughs> I don't stop. <laughs> well, I, I haven't heard from Stingray, yes. so he must have fell asleep. He must have. He got bored. Yeah. Sorry, Stingray. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like, where where diamonds? It's all carbon. Are you feeling sparkly, Kev? I always feel sparkly. I love my sparkles. Yes, Norma, the doggies are having a conversation. It's, um, hey, that, that, that noise that you had the other night, we've, sorry for changing the subject again. There's, we, in our area, we've just sighted one of the first um, mountain dingoes that they, I don't know the real name. Hang on, sorry. The mountain dingo uh, or ice dingo? I had my mom's ashes around my neck, and the day I first wore them, I wore my nephew's house, and I lost it. And no one could find it. I said, well, I guess my mom wanted to stay at my grandson's house, LOL. Wow. It's very possible. Um, yeah. Why not? Like, why wouldn't they want to see their grandson grow up? Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. I wouldn't worry about it. It'll either turn up um, or... Uh, It'll be found and moved on. Yeah. Yeah. Crystals do that too. They disappear. They jump out of my hands if they don't want to be played with. Mm. I had like, one explode. Like it didn't selenite. explode. It I've exploded had out of its setting. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, no, that's that's interesting. Yeah, it's about the dingoes. Did you know? That noise that you heard the other night, was it real weird, like high? Because when this dingo was around here, you grizzly for non-Australians, um, we usually get dingoes there. A lot of them are on the coast um, and what not many. What the hell's a dingo? A dingo is like a big red cattle dog. Um, it's a national. Oh, okay. Well, I didn't know. They've got a totally different DNA than any of the others. Um but a lot of the red red cattle dogs have the same genetic that's been passed through and they have the same lockjaw and stuff. Mm. But recently, because all the dogs and everything have been going off and because of you guys teaching me about these noises that you all hear in the bushes over your way, this this noise came up and it was, yeah, it got the same one. There's the, a volume um, one and a volume two. Volume one's better. Volume two yeah. is is more yeah, than volume two is a lot of hig bit of it's a bit higgly piggly yeah it's yeah volume one um by judy hall <laughs> no a dingo ate a baby that's what you're associating with that years ago this lady <laughs> was out camping near as rock which is the central ley line connector in australia um and anyway they blamed the dingo for taking the baby but then they decided, like the mother said the dingo took the baby. And then they said no. They put her in jail. She was in jail for, I don't know, 20 years or something. And then they let her out. Um, but they're having problems. The dingo was a dog. Yeah, it is. Um, quite a big, big, yeah, they're a native dog to Australia. They're beautiful, beautiful dogs, strong beautiful dogs really beautiful nature they talk anyway yeah, recently, mother, that's right recently and um she went to jail she got yeah. convicted and went to jail by the yeah. northern territory um police and there was great controversy over it it was only a very new baby yeah um and she did get she did eventually get let out. Now, the thing that a lot of the world doesn't know, that dingoes um, are very attracted to the smell of babies. Um, I lived when I was very young. I was four. I lived out with my parents on western Queensland and a dingo, they had dingo trappers back in that day because um, they used to take the sheep and all that sort of stuff. And he had a little white dingo. Um, wow. so as a pup, like, you know, so he, he obviously kept pups and raised them kind of thing. Um, and he said to my mother, he said, whatever you do, do not leave your children unattended around a dingo. 
ever. Yeah. Um, and they're on an island. Um, what's the Fraser. island? Fraser no, Island. No, the other one. Is it? Oh. Isn't there a S one that starts with S? Anyway, there's a big island off Brisbane coast, and it's a native sanctuary for dingoes. And there's so many dingoes there; it's ridiculous. So much for wildlife conservation because they need someone with common sense in there, and they allow the tourists to go in there. And the amount of um, children that have been attacked by the dingoes, but mostly because the bloody things are starving, but they are attracted to um that yeah. scent yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah the younger yeah so very very dangerous around your children um so um it is very probable and possible that a dingo took a baby because yeah. Um, Highly, yeah. but recently we found we've had yeah similar to coyotes um recently <laughs> around here all our dogs have been going off at night and there have been these horrific scary noises not your normal noises at night um and i found out yes no, not my baby <laughs> not our babies no we guarded our babies <laughs> um the they found that this dingo is like a mountain dingo that you don't often see and i was asking michelle if it was possible that, that one of those was around michelle's place at as well because it seems weird that you get one sighting. You know, you there's got to be a reason. Like well, and we're, I, not Al, we're not alpine here. You're you're like we're only like three hundred meters above sea level, but you're like a thousand, like nine hundred yeah. or thousand. So alpine areas is where they are generally seen. Yeah, um, yeah dogs. God, they're beautiful. Yeah. I don't know about it. There's um, we have a guy across the road, not far from here, just 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 over there, and he's got. Um, quite a few dingoes that he um, has in captivity. They're wild ones that he's saved or whatever. Um, and they, on certain evenings, just on on dusk, they'll all um, go in chorus with the howling and it will send chills up your back like it is. Yeah, it's like a... Like the wolves, yeah. I, similar to Grizzy, some of those noises you've been that have been recorded and we've been listening to over the week like you very high pitch kind of mm -hmm. yeah it's this screeching it's a really high pitch it's different than anything you'll ever hear it's a totally different sound well dingoes don't bark they only they only they make sound of, yeah screech kind of thing um i was there's coastal ones as well kath and um, have you heard of Seal Seal Rock? Yeah, Seal yeah. Rock? yeah. We were in, going through there one day, and it's a little coastal town, and they've got a little inlet there, and the seals obviously come in there as well. But there's a massive amount of dingoes there, but they they look different to to the inland ones. Yeah, and I was driving driving along, and I looked to the side, and there was this dingo massive dingo it was so tall standing in the, someone's driveway of the house looking out of the road and its eyes were glowing red and this was in the middle of the day and i was i looked at that and went no no way am i going bushwalking here yeah no I'm they're on a to... they're on a totally different very similar kind of hertzy wise as these other things i've got a yes for you kathleen how about you michelle oh is there a question oh, i'm too busy getting freaked out about dingoes yeah um, <laughs> but they're beautiful animals in the photo there mine says yes to kath yeah. double yes double yes Yep. Best wishes, Kathleen. <laughs> Choose wisely, though. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> just, I'll just add that in. Choose wisely. <laughs> yeah. Yep. You can get married, but is it a good thing or a. Mm. Mm. So, 
Yeah, so the yeah, different sorts, but yes, the dingoes um very wily, very cunning. Yeah. Highly yeah. intelligent. And mm. quick. You're welcome. Tell you how they look like. Uh they um, look like hang on. They look like a yellow dog. They're like well, now yeah. you make it sound like it sounds like uh the golden retriever, like old yellow or something. No, no, they're not fluffy. They're like um They've actually smooth, seen smooth, the Australian uh, Kelpie and the Australian Cattle Dog were actually. Oh, that bred. tells us a lot. We're from America. No, but they were bred from the dingo. They have dingo in their background. Well, yeah, because well, I had. Oh, okay. So that that's telling me. Well, look, look, it looks like a giraffe. Well, I know what a giraffe looks like, but I don't know what a dingo looks like. Like that. Yeah. That looks like a Tasmanian devil. No, it doesn't. <laughs> no, Tasmanian Devil's much meaner than that. Well, that's what it looks like. It definitely definitely has a big head. They've got a lock jaw. Like if you if they get something in their mouth, you, it's virtually impossible to get their mouths to open. My boy was half dingo, half red cattle dog, and he had the lock jaw. And if he got something in his mouth, the only way it took me 18 months. This look, at that, look, at that, look at that face. Yeah, they're beautiful. Now, that looks would like you, a chihuahua. Would you trust that face? Yeah. Looks like, that looks like a chihuahua. Sarah, a coyote is usually much uh, much skinnier than a wolf. The, they're yeah. about the same size as a, yeah. I love mm. them. I absolutely love them. I don't. <laughs> Night, Rebecca. We're getting ready to have a closing too. Everybody have a good weekend. So they're scary. You can't trust them. No, they don't trust look them. scary. Hey, you can't trust them. They've got a different mindset they're they're always on guard so they're highly defensive all the time i like, would be um, more scary of a pet bull or rottweiler than that no way they, uh, they've got a criminal intelligence is how i'll explain it the rockwallers and the um pincers what what was the other one a pit bull pit bull yeah they're they're bigger and, and bulkier and they've got more strength when you're coming when they're coming. I've been attacked by all three of those. Um, they've got more strength when they come at you. Whereas the dingoes, like Michelle says, they're they're really smart about their attack. They're like your um, green beret as compared to just a normal, you know, law enforcement type. Like they're really smart, super smart, and fast, much faster than the rockwallers and that. Yeah, I love dingoes, Sean. But, yeah. you know, I respect them. You don't go, oh, here, little one, you know, come and I'll give you a kiddly cuddly. Uh-uh, no way. It, even with my dog, you know, I had him for 14 years and I couldn't trust him 100%. No way. What are chow chows? They're those little tiny ones, aren't they? Oh, my Lord. See, you, we... Da, da, da. <laughs> I know we get onto all sorts of subjects. <laughs> Stradbroke Island, it is. That's where we're living. Oh, on. right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you hear news stories in, in Fraser Island. All the all the people go onto this island, you know, and they take their four wheel drives up to this island. They all go fishing or they get bogged. There's a place where they cross from the mainland to this island, and people set up their eskies that I don't know if you know what that is, a cooler you know, that you put your beer and ice in. And people sit there on their chair and watch people here. get bogged all weekend. <laughs> um, it's quite possible to see them over there because the black market, yeah, inter-trading of animals, native animals. But, like a lady got attacked a couple of weeks ago, three or four of them attacked her. What does she expect? She's right in their territory, you know, like... Uh, where that was See, up at Sean, Fraser recently. Now, we don't have dingoes in Kentucky. I live in Kentucky. 
That's because they're hungry. There's nothing for them to eat there. Exactly. They're on an island. And they're on an island. They were there first. It, ugh, honestly. You shouldn't be allowing people in there. They should be making sure the darn things are fed if they're not going to let them out back out into the to the wild. There's nothing exactly. there for them to eat. It's like the bears coming into town and the bears cop all the blame. It's not their fault, you know. They shouldn't have stripped their trees and their homes. It's, their, it's the people's fault, not the bears, same as the dingoes. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, not good. That's what happens. See, people think they're doing great things with conservation, but they're actually creating problems. Exactly. Stimulus response. Man. Thanks, Norma. Yeah. Mm. I've got this belt buckle I got when I was a kid. Oh. <laughs> Guess what my belt buckle says? Oh, I, I, hate love, to I love dingoes. <laughs> the, the right to keep and arm bears. It says the right to keep and arm bears, Second Amendment revised, and on the back it's got in today's world the right to have guns is not enough. You need something strong to back up your bullets. Not everyone can afford to have a have and feed a bear, but we should at least have the right to keep and arm them. You're a you're you've got a bear spirit though, haven't you? Oh yeah, bears and eagles. <laughs> she then told the bear spirit card tonight. Yeah, she, yeah, yeah. So yeah, exactly. Beautiful. I love bears. But this is so cool. Like, it's really well made. Like, that's the back of it. Yeah. And you got that in Australia? No, no. I got this in Fargo, North Dakota, when I was 12. Yep. I love it. It would make life interesting, wouldn't it, if the bears could shoot back? <laughs> exactly. Oh, my Lord. They're pretty smart. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> I think they made a movie about that, didn't they? Uh, Bear cocaine. <laughs> uh, oh, Lexington, no. Kentucky, Lexington police officer where, I'm, where I moved from. Yeah, that was actually a true story. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yes. Oh, a teddy bear. Maybe all the big feeties have had a bit too much of something as well. Oh, <laughs> Lord. I know. Some of the well, we've like, gone all around we've gone all around the world today, haven't we? Like Oh no, yeah, yeah, we sure have. So hopefully everybody <laughs> enjoyed it. We usually and there ain't no telling what we're gonna do on the next show. You don't oh, look next show. <laughs> Next show, we do have something. We do know what's going to go on. We're having the Danny is coming on with his brother. And, no cucarachis. No, no. We're having just boomerangs. The boys are going to teach everyone how to no make their own boomerangs. No what? No dingoes. No dingoes. You're oh, welcome. Dingoes. Is this no. set next Saturday that you've got the boomerang on? Yeah. Yeah. Um, a, a lot of people are interested in the sport. Thanks, Norma. And um, the they, but we can't get booms, so we're going to teach everyone how to make their own booms, and then we're going to show everybody the professional booms and where to p purchase the professional booms. And, you're going to arm and, everyone with boomerangs. Beg your pardon. You're going to arm everyone with boomerangs. Yes. So that you can visually see energy and what how energy works. We're talking I get the, about I, I, I get the ones that if you get hit in the head, nothing happens. Behave here. This is a sensitive topic for moi at the moment. Seems I'm taking on a very big group. I don't know. It sounds like you're starting a boomerang revolution here. I'm not sure. No, because Michelle, these are returning boomerangs we're talking about. Um, not Kylie's. That's a totally different boomerang. Okay. Oh, I thought they didn't know there was different types. Well, you've got the nationals down near you coming up for the Australian nationals. 
Except, except there's the one, you know, where he sings, you know, my boomerang won't come back. Yeah, well, he hasn't got a good boom. <laughs> <laughs> it's an actual song written about that. Yeah, I know. It's my no, boomerang um, won't come back. <laughs> I know. Um, the Nationals are on down near your, your way in October. So all the people from Australia are getting together because we've got the World Cup coming up in April in Denver. They've changed the location from Hawaii, Grizz, to Denver. Really? Nice. Nice. Yeah, but I'm with Grizz. I'd go and probably get hit in the head myself. No, because there are safety rules, my dear. It's a sport. Sure there is. There are. Talk about something that flies through the air. (laughs) Yep. You ought to see some of these guys. They do trick shots. They catch them with their feet. Oh, amazing. One of the guys is throwing four at a time and catching all four. It's wow. Things have changed since we, when we were little. Like the competitions are unbelievable. Like uh, it's amazing. And boomerangs are not just your normal shapes anymore. They're all sorts of different shapes. It's big. I'm into it. Well, good. You know, I'll wait for that then. That would be awesome. Yeah. Okay. Well, it doesn't sound, is that sarcasm I'm hearing? In no, your no, no, that'd be <laughs> awesome. I think it might be. <laughs> no, that'd be awesome. I'm glad Michelle can, came on the show. So, <laughs> I really know. you're not blaming me for the cockroaches or the dingoes or anything else. No, nope. that's all my doing. Nope. Nope. Seriously, no, nope. nope. <laughs> not at all. Well, I think I think it's cats. She she's the one that goes wayward. Yeah. Correct. I would have thought you'd have kept her under a bit more control by now, but no, nah, obviously not. No, I'm now, you know what? She's got her own set of railroad tracks, and they're always just wherever it goes. I, you know. <laughs> so. Well, that's good. I haven't didn't see any fairies or orbs today though. I did. 46 14. Oh really? What did I have today? Uh, there's another smoke ring to your left. Oh really? Did yeah. you look at last last week's smoke ring? Was it an actual infinity sign? It was a beauty. Um I didn't see the infinity, I just saw a big ring. See? Yep. 46 14. Check that one out. That's almost the same time as the last one. Almost. That's interesting. I yep. saw the light, the room light up. Was that then? Uh, I don't know. Thanks, I was Bob. too busy looking at the ring. Well, thanks for being here, Bob. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Hope everybody enjoyed it. And that's a wrap from coast to coast and around the world. Uh, Sarah, <laughs> yeah, stay in the woods and keep us posted and look for dinghies and Ding- dingoes. And, good. <laughs> dingoes and whatever. Um, I'm, I'm telling you, I, I'd be afraid of a Rottweiler and a pit bull besides a dingo. You so. sound like I went on a Rocky Mountain ride, trail ride with the tour guide thing, and he said he was more afraid of um, our snakes than he was of meeting a bear. And Let's we're grow. on the side of the mountain, single file, yeah, yeah, on horseback. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And all the tourists are saying, geez, I hope we see a grizzly. And I'm like, you're all nuts. Where do you think you're going to go? <laughs> like, now that like, would be funnier like, than hell. I would love to see that. I was like, are you nuts? I get straight up and down. I was like, bleh, bleh. and I think you want to see a grizzly bear. And then we got to the, <laughs> the chalet, whatever, the log cabin. And you can only get in and out there on horseback. And the toilets. <laughs> oh, buddy. They're they're a good fifty meters or more from the from that the homestead, and I'm looking at it going. That's called an outhouse. Well, well the outhouse was out of town house. <laughs> and then I said, "I'll oh, just watch out for the brown bears because they come in and get into the rubbish bin. So if there's a brown bear out there, um, you know, just don't venture out." And I said, well, what if you're in the outhouse? Well, you get stuck in the outhouse until the bear decides to leave. 
I'd oh, rather yeah. a bear than a redback any day. Well, no, I'd rather that just... than a dingleball or, or uh, whatever red you back, call it. Redback spider? It's... I'd much no, rather just... a bear the, than a redback any the day. Dog. Nah, you just step on the spider, that's it. <laughs> Gone. But, but um... that's if you see it before you sit down. Oh. At least you You're see a bear. Awful. Well, now we've really really discussed everything. (laughs) Y'all need to go find the Yowies, which you need to find. No, thanks. The Yowies? Yeah. Yeah, we have Yowies. Right now, you need to find one. Why? Because you haven't seen one. I'll go out to the Dangersley and see if I can get any action out there. Obviously, they'll like me. Don't do not wish that upon me. I don't want to see a yowie. Why not? Well, it probably won't be a pleasant experience. You don't know. Maybe oh. it might speak to you. Well, don't they live in swamps? No, that's that's the skunk uh-huh. cave in, down south in, in Florida and Mississippi and Louisiana. Right, well, tell me your version of what a yowie is. Uh, it's a small version of a uh, Bigfoot. Okay. Well, there's some people over here, they call them Yowies, Bunyips. We've got different names over here. The indigenous have different names and things as well. well but they're basically it. like a baby BF. <laughs> yeah, Bigfoot. Yeah, same. Yep. Well, I thought Bunyips lived in billabongs. Well, Bear bongs. <laughs> not bongs, bill, billabongs. It's Bill like a waterfall. A black, <laughs> it's like kind of black. I don't see y'all getting that, that's beer bongs, my lord. <laughs> <laughs> no, villa bongs. It's a little water hole. Yeah, that's where that's where waltzing Matilda, you know. And, uh, no, I don't know. <laughs> we, yeah, yeah, you know, down by the billabong, that's where he caught the sh- sheep and put it in yeah. his backpack. This the swaggy. Yeah, I'll be looking for you one day. Yeah. No, I I have not seen any. I don't think I've been in anywhere where they would inhabit. Probably you see, you don't know. Be. They probably live on your property and walk by and don't even know it. Grizzy, I'm oh. going back to that place, you know, on top of that hill that I got lost. I'm definitely going back there. I'm going to take my EMF, you know, my little machine with me next time but i'm def i'm gonna go and have a look at the last sighting of where it was out at dangersley falls because that country out there that makes sense with all the cave systems that this appalachian trail things bringing up for me um and all the underground tunnels that'd be perfect out there it's all mining country the gorge is like i don't know probably a thousand foot deep maybe like it's deep and there's really heaps good. of hidey holes everywhere. So definitely, could, would be, definitely would be there. Yeah. Yeah, I reckon yeah. too. Yeah. And the gold, you know, they seem to be attracted by gold. I want to do it go. What? From coast to coast around the world, ladies and gentlemen, that's a wrap. You all have a good Bye, night everyone. or a good morning in Australia. Take care, Thanks everybody. Bye. Bye. Take care, everyone. <laughs>